I always ask my guests if they have any regrets. I personally don't have any regrets. Even when it comes to my tattoos, I have the silliest tattoos. Even my ET on my leg, it's still a childhood memory for me, and I love it. I've had tattoos on top of tattoos strictly because I wanted more tattoos. I started getting tattoos when I was 18. I'm 52 now, and I can't stop. I've had lazy treatment before on something on my arm. It's four tattoos on top of each other. And that experience at that place was pretty fast. It was pretty cold. It was in and out, swiped the credit card. Don't really tell me much. Didn't give me much details or anything was going to happen. So I never went back. So as of most recently, I'm so lucky enough to have had two sessions at Removery Tattoo Removal. My tattoo on my arm that looks like a big black blob is now super light. I've had two sessions. I have a long road ahead of me. None of this stuff happens overnight. You cannot take a tattoo up in one sitting. You have to be patient. And it's painful. They ice you up. It's super fast. To me, it felt like a bunch of rubber bands. But what's more painful than that is looking at something on your body that you think you're stuck with for the rest of your life. That sucks. But now for me, I'm really happy I started this journey. I'm slowly going to get this tattoo removed. I never thought in a million years I have any kind of real estate on my arm. I don't even know what I want, but it's exciting. I'm so honored to announce that One Life, One Chance podcast is now with Removery. I have a code. Use tobyh 20 and get $100 off your first session. Call 866-934-4570 or go to removery.com. One of the most experienced tattoo remover companies in the world. Over 600,000 removal treatments done, 100 locations, U.S., Canada, and Australia. State-of-the-art peak-away laser technology, cryotechnology to reduce any discomfort. This is so exciting for me because all I do on these podcasts is talk about tattoos. From day one, if you've been listening to this podcast, talk about tattoos, talk about getting removed, talk about getting covered up. So this is such a perfect fit for me. Once again, go to removery.com or call 866-934-4570. Use my code tobyh 20 and get $100 off. These guys are located everywhere. Try it out. Check, check, microphone, check. Welcome to the One Life, One Chance podcast. I'm your host, Toby Morse. And today, I have my brother from another mother, Mr. Derek Green, to the right of me. Uh, I'm very sad because Derek's about to go on tour for like three months tomorrow. Yeah, And, and while you're in man. town, you're always here with me by my side, and I appreciate you being here. All good, man. So I'm I, miss love, you. I love being here. I know, and, and, and the people and the listeners love you, too. They love your voice. They love your questions. Aww. They love your knowledge. They love... Um, I don't know, your soothing voice, you know? Well, this is, it's very sad, but I I shall return. I return. shall return. And then in front of us, we have the wonderful, and we've been trying to do this for a long time. Yeah. Throughout the pandemic, throughout people traveling, throughout life, throughout everything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Tiffany Lonsdale Hands. Hi. But I just found out yesterday. Great welcome. pronunciation. Thank you. Thank you. I just found horrible. out yesterday, your last, well, the other day I did my deep dive that your last name is Hands. Yes. So my, awesome. I know. I, I have the, the double barreled hyphenated name. Schmack and <laughs> <laughs> I love it, but I just go by Tiffany Lonsdale yeah. with my stage name. It's just a bit easier. Your stage name. Ooh, yeah. stage name. But I, I, but I mm. never met somebody the last name. Hey, oh, Mr. Hands from Fast Times Ridgemont High. No, Mr. Han. Wow. Wow. I never. I just thought about that. Mm-hmm. But you're the first person. Yeah. So Mr. Han or Mr. Hands. I don't know. I think it's hands, to be honest. Mm. We get to fact check that for okay. the podcast. Yeah. Right. Uh, but welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you, guys. I'm so chuffed to be here. Oh, she's so gonna get a lot of English on here too. <laughs> you know yeah, what that means? Yeah. You know, I I know a lot about this terminologies. <laughs> um, I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, well, it's um, quite lovely to have you here. You have such an interesting story because obviously you're born in England, but then you lived in Texas as well, which is super random. Yeah, my British dad. Born and bred in London, and then met my mom in England. They married, had me. I was born in London, and then my parents divorced quite quickly when I was a baby. Mm. So British dad and I moved over to the States okay. when I was a kid. How old? Under a year. Oh, okay. okay. Really young. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, To yeah. California first, actually. Okay. Oh. Santa Barbara, Los Angeles, and then when I was seven, dad and I moved to dallas texas oh my wow God. i know and how how was that like is that a it's a bit of a shock yeah i was gonna say that how yeah. old were you then when i you was were seven seven. Yeah. seven and so i grew up you know by the ocean and in the water and on the beach and playing with all the sand and then all <laughs> of a sudden i'm in landlocked dallas texas yeah. and the weather's different and mm-hmm. the environment's different but you know i was young enough that i 
was straight into elementary school and you kind of adapt when you're a kid like that. Totally, yeah, The yeah. kids noticed that you had an accent? I, at that point, had an American accent. Ooh, okay. Because wow. I'd grown up in California. Mm, My dad is, me. you know, definitely still has his British accent. Right. So um, I wouldn't say I had any particular accent at that time. Okay, so they weren't cracking on you as a kid, you know, like, no. oh my, trying to do like an English Who's accent this alien? in Texas. No, that came later. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm, so, I'm sorry to hear that. that so was, yeah, so Texas, yeah. How was like going to school there and stuff? It was okay. You know, um, in the part of Dallas where I lived, it's um, it's a pretty easy, everything's 10 minute drive away. Dallas is a great city to live in. Like it's yeah. it's affordable and there's quite a lot to do there. I wouldn't say it's always the easiest to navigate if you're visiting somewhere like New York and London. You go and you have all these big landmarks to go and yeah. see. And that Dallas, is, it's a little more in the know. Here's where you need to go and enjoy. But it's such a great city. And, you know, my dad's still there. So oh, wow. I go back for holidays and catch up with friends and family there. And it's because of, I think, a lot of the companies that have moved there in the recent years. Yeah. You know, it's really brought in a whole different form of uh, employees from different parts of the country and from different parts of the world. And I think it's really added to the spice the of culture Dallas. there. And everything. Yeah. 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 Are you an only child? I am. Um, okay. From my parents, I'm an right. only child. And mm -hmm. then my dad remarried. So I have three much younger brothers. Oh, wow. And my mom uh, never remarried, and so I grew up as an only child, like in front of the television, latchkey kid. Wow. Okay. Yeah, like just get home from school, make myself a <laughs> microwave, you know, the TV dinners. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And the Lunchables, God help us <laughs> all. Lunchables? Jeez, and I'm sure I still have damage from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a Texas, like, slang did you have like you talk with it well the y'all comes in oh yeah yeah yeah. it, it does sometimes right it does okay <laughs> all right all it right. does it does it's we've got derek here today providing all the I, accents i, I do all go. the accents here i mean <laughs> this is primarily a, a typical <laughs> southern accent is but it? i'm not sure if it's the area of dallas I, you know, it depends on, you know, because different areas have different accents. Mm -hmm. it, they do. You know what I'm saying? I do. Right. So <laughs> I'm enjoying this. So, so do, I know you went to boarding school, obviously. That was yes. in England. But did you go to, was that, how many years were you going to school in Texas? Like, So I went to elementary school. O-M. Holy unprofessional. I cannot I can't believe, believe this. The, the hostess just did that. Yeah. Shocking. I'm so sorry. <sighs> I've never done that before. God, the rhythm. Have you ever done that before, Derek? Never. Okay. Okay. Go back. Let's go. Okay. I'm gonna just take a breath. It's a yeah. special episode, though. Sorry about that too. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to <laughs> elementary school in Dallas, then middle school, and then so I, I think I was 13 when I then got sent to England for boarding school. Wow. What, do you mean, what do you mean get sent? So when you get sent to boarding school, your parents don't go with you. Yeah. You, you get. I thought you in trouble or something. Like you going to boarding school? Well, no. I think it was more my dad wanted me to be immersed in English culture because mm. he'd grown up in that. Right. Yeah. And I think that's fair. You know, I would go and visit my granny in England and my uncle in France during the summers, but it was never enough to fully understand that upbringing, the heritage, the culture, yeah. that side of my family. So I want to have a good balance. Yeah. Yeah. It was an opportunity to spend time over there. And so I was 13. I went to a convent what? Wow! Yeah, in the middle of nowhere, England, beautiful part of the countryside, fucking freezing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you have to wear a uniform. So I went from a school that had, you know, a, a co-ed school in Dallas, which I think probably had 1500 students, maybe, maybe more yeah. to a convent in England, only girls, total 300 students from wow. the age of like three to 16. So very small environment, school environment, and was a real culture shock. Yeah, I'm sure. It, it sounds was like it. Definitely at 13 years old as well, which is, you know, a delicate age it for is, it is. anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but wow. that was three years. And then I went to a second boarding school uh, just outside of London as well for the, what is the equivalent of the end of high school. So from 17. 16, 16 through 18. So okay. that was two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that the Royal Military School? Is that? No, that was rugby school. Okay. So you know where rugby sport, yeah. it started at 
that school in the town of rugby in oh, England. Wow, okay. So oh. there's a lot of history there. Yeah. Oh so God. rugby was the big sport there for the boys. The girls weren't allowed to play it because rules, boarding school, liability. They but didn't want a bunch of girls breaking their legs and was, getting caught. That wasn't virus. anything you wanted to do, though. I was quite interested in it because mm. I've always been athletic. I've mm. always played sports. and Cricket? <laughs> except cricket okay that's maybe one sport i've never played okay. but i would enjoy cricket <laughs> with a cup of pims watching everyone else play it so <laughs> i think you know by proxy i play it um <laughs> so i loved sports i just when i was young starting elementary school in dallas soccer is such a big sport yeah for everyone in school so i played soccer football growing up and i loved it and then when i went to boarding school in england you know every country is different and girls didn't play soccer at the time so i yeah. played field hockey and i played tennis and i loved the idea of playing rugby but we weren't allowed and then when i went to university also in england that's when i then found a club that was able to play soccer so okay. then i started playing soccer again at university Okay, awesome. And what year was that? I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so soccer at university? Yeah. Wow, okay. So yeah. were you, were, what were your goals at that time? Like, what did you want to do? Oh, gosh. Was acting on your mind at all? It's interesting. No, it, it was not at the forefront of my mind. I think I was in survival mode, to okay. be honest. When I, when I really look back, yeah. I was trying to fit in. I was a huge people pleaser and so I was friends with everyone. Want to be liked. Yeah, I really yeah, did. Yeah. And I'm lucky. I've made, you know, friends for life at uni and I love them. And we had so much fun together. I was drinking far too much, which is what you do at university in England. Mm -hmm. We were drinking from age 15 at boarding school. You know, wow. it really is like part of the culture. And we learned to drink before we learned to drive. Wow. So, at the time, you know, you're not allowed to get your driver's license until you're 17 yeah. in England. But so, you know, we're, you know, at the pub at age 16, buying ciggies and pretending we're 18 and having a pint. Like, wow. it was that easy. Was that kind of like the rebellion of you guys because you were in private schools and you wanted to like... I think so. It was, we were in between being children growing into adults yeah and so there's a bit of confusion there yeah <laughs> and you're also at boarding school so there is a sense of independence there because you're not going home to your parents house every night mm -hmm. you go back to your house and you have a sense of time to yourself or freedom freedom the yeah. grounds are quite big so you can go off and sneak a ciggy you know a if ciggy. You want. so that's just yeah. one cigarette yeah okay ciggy I think, yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. you probably didn't have time for more than that because <laughs> then you'd have to run back and change your clothes, otherwise you reeked of cigarette smoke. We used to call it a, a Lucy. Oh, a Lucy. Oh, I didn't know that. I've That's like an that. East Coast term, like a yeah. New York thing, right? A Lucy. Okay. A Lucy. Yes. Okay. Correct. A Siggy and a Lucy. Yeah. Were you tight with your parents at that time? No, it it it, w it was definitely difficult. You know, I I'm I, I want to just preface this with I love my parents and yeah. we are really close now and I, yeah. I I feel so fortunate there were times that I just felt really unwanted being sent to boarding school yeah I'm not the only one and you're the only child too though and awesome. I'm the only yeah. child but I had an amazing support system in England through my aunt and uncle there and they really took me on as their fourth child That's awesome and so I felt very supported in in a lot of ways I also was the only American that had come over. So we had a lot of exchange students, but none from America. So I definitely stuck out like a sore thumb. You know, yeah. that's when the accent name calling kind of started really? because mm. that's, I came over to English boarding school with an American accent. Oh. And I look how I look. And, yeah. you know, like not a lot of people are called Tiffany at the boarding uh, school right. and so it was like oh tiffany from america and it was like oh my god i don't want to have to deal with this so meanwhile you were born over there it's i like, was born over there know. yeah and then i started taking what are called verse and prose classes so i worked with an elocution teacher when i was 13 because my parents who had been educated outside of america felt like i sounded not articulate enough because i was like Oh my God. Yeah. Um, right. But uh, yeah, like, you uh, know, uh, 
on my all feet. these filler wor- words. Yes, Americanized. And Americanized, and yeah. although I think it's worldwide yeah, now, of course, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And <laughs> well, you tell us when you come back from tour right. uh, uh, how it is out there. So that you were proper enough, as far like yes, was, I yeah. think there was maybe a laziness to how I, I was speaking, is how I would describe it. And I get America, it. I get America. it. You know, in America, we speak American. <laughs> People are just sometimes jealous of that, but. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, it's this relaxed way of speaking. That's all. It is. And I, I also think, quite rightly, with filler words, you're thinking about what you're going to say next. Correct. That's why we do that. Um, yeah. And or you like, just don't have the vocabulary <laughs> to express truly what it is that you're feeling. Good point. I think some people, that's probably true. Mm. And so I immediately at 13 was registered in elocution classes mrs brown may she rest in peace she was wonderful that's where the acting really kicked in gotcha because we went around the county and as individuals entered contests for verse and prose and drama so i would i would be in a room full of the parents who were there and then maybe the 10 of us who were entered into it and we would we would go up. There wasn't really a stage. It wasn't that formal, but we would be in front of the crowd and having to either read the verse and prose that we had prepared. Yeah. And it's all about storytelling, as we know. Yes. And so I started to get quite good at that and quite confident. It's, it's really a great confidence building tool, but it was separate from acting. Mm. Yeah. And I would, ap- I would audition for the school plays and I would get small parts here and there and I really loved it, but yeah. I never really knew how to articulate this is what I want to do. I love this. I love TV. I love film. I love theater. But I, I was too much in my head about things. I think, mm-hmm. you know, many of us are. Was there pressure to do something else from your family? Did they, did they ever uh, route they wanted you to take? I, I think there was an expectation to get good grades mm-hmm. and to get a good job and follow along a certain path for sure. Yeah. And Were you getting good grades? No. I wasn't what? actually. I'm wow. not. A, I know. I really. I'm I did shocked. all right. I did all right. Some things that I absolutely loved, I did well in. Of course. Right? We all do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We all do. I'm not. I think I'm better now because I have less fear around it. I was never a brilliant test taker. Mm. And I also didn't study because what I realized later in life was I had this fear of failing. So in my mind, I rationalize if I don't study, and I don't pass the test or I don't do well, then I can just blame it and say, see, I just didn't study. It's Mm. fine. Rather than actually understanding what that was, I could have easily just taken more time to study and done best. But that wasn't my existence. That wasn't where my head was at. I think I did enough like the bare minimum. Just to get by, yeah. Just to get by. I really was in sort of fear mode. That's why I love sports so much. And I loved connecting with people. I love talking with people. Yeah. And I realize now I may have not used those education years to the to the best of, of my ability, <laughs> <laughs> which we can all look back, right? And totally. say like, whoops, could have done a little better. But I had a great education. I'm very fortunate and I, I loved it. Yeah. So you, so you were entering those contests and were you winning some of them? Yes, I was. I started to do rather well. Wow. And... I wish there'd been maybe one person that said, wow, you're really, really good at this. You need to keep doing that. Okay. That wasn't, that wasn't what was being communicated to me. It was like, hey, well done. And that That's was it. it. Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. And so I sort of, I, I backed away from that because as you brought up earlier with um, the Royal Military Academy of, of Sandhurst at the second boarding school, we all, as a school, had to enroll in Thursday afternoon community service, whatever that was. Gotcha. And mine was the high school equivalent of ROTC. Okay, yeah. Oh Goodbye, Cadet Force, CCF. So I joined the Army version of that. Wow. To be a British Army officer? Yes, that was the goal. So for the next eight years, I, I actually worked towards that the goal. The next eight years? Wow, Because really? that was two years of high school at the end right then three years of university mm-hmm. in rotc and then i took a bit of a gap year after that and then the next year you have to apply and take all the army tests so by that end of that seventh year i then had a place at the royal military academy of sandhurst wow. 
and I was Whoa. going to join. And what does that mean by joining? Like, what, what, what will you do? What does what that So entail? you join Sandhurst, which is a military academy for one year, yeah. and that's where the training happens. But you sign on for a four-year commitment. So the next three years, you get sent on your placement, wherever that is. And you join a anywhere certain, in the world? It, it can. You, you can put a preference in, and you are you join a particular branch of the army. Okay. So mine was the, the Royal Artillery, which is artillery. And wow. at that time, I think it's still the case now, women weren't allowed to join infantry at the front lines. And so I join, joined artillery and they sponsor me. So when you take the test for Sandhurst, you get sponsored by the branch of government of the army that yeah. you want because the tests happen you have to take two one is two nights and three days you have to pass that and then you come back for three nights and four days of intensive officer testing and how were you on those tests because in school you weren't the best it was interesting because i took the first test right out of uni and i had brought in that i don't i don't care i'll be great attitude without mm. doing a lot of work and i got not a great test score yeah and the officer looked at me and he said you know you can come back and do the second test but you're gonna have to work at it and you're gonna have to basically pull your thumb out of your ass right mm, yeah. um i was it, it really hit hard because i wanted it so badly yeah. and it shook me in the best way mm -hmm. and so then i took the year out i moved back to the states for a year had a really fun time and then moved back to england and that's when i started studying okay intensively for the big test yeah so you know you read the paper front and back every day because you have to know about all the current topics politics hmm. everything wow because as an officer you are going to be making decisions in different countries about different situations and you need to know about them it's mm -hmm. intense and all the aptitude tests and all the physical testing, plus working with a team. Because when you go to the testing facility, which is specifically for this test, you are there for three nights and four days. And the minute that you walk in that door, they are watching you. Mm. How you socialize, how you lead, if you drink too much. Because the thing about army officers is you go to the mess at the end of the day and you have a drink. Yeah. And it's part of the socializing. It's part of bonding and all this. Oh, they so like, allow you to drink. Why well, didn't that? Really yeah. Understand. So mm -hmm. you go and have a bite to eat and you go and drink and you're under the microscope the entire time and you're put with a group that is assigned to you. It's like a movie in itself, man, to be honest. It is. It's really interesting. You know? mm -hmm. And I got really lucky because I got a great group of people. Yeah. And we just all looked at each other that first day and said, let's work together because then we all have a better chance of passing rather than us trying to each shine as a leader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you could see the dysfunction in the other groups and they hadn't quite gelled like that. Yeah. And by the end of the three days, three nights and four days, you've been through the ringer. It's 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 great. And you've really bonded. And then you go home and then you get a letter a week later about whether you passed or not. And wow. I passed. And it was still to this day one of the happiest moments of my life because I worked so hard for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The hardest you ever worked. Yeah. At that time, absolutely. And so you get in, then what happens? Then where do you go? So I got a place and you are allowed to hold that place for quite some years afterwards if maybe you're... Not ready to go at that yes, moment. Yes, if you're working or whatever's happening in your life. Once you have the place, you have the place. So... Concurrently, I was working at MTV in London. That's right. You were traveling around, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I really enjoyed the logistical side of events and working with the MTV team and all the artists who were coming yeah. through. And I started to see all the shiny Get a taste media. Of the world. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. And it was using my logistical left side brain as the testing was with Army officer training different of course but my brain lit up in the same way yeah and i thought oh, okay maybe i'll just do this job with mtv and music and events for a little while because i've got this plan b how'd you get that job at mtv i think my uncle knew someone randomly who just happened to be working there and my resume ended up on his desk and i went in for an interview i'd never met this person before and they were taking in new interns at that oh, okay, time. Yeah. And I 
applied and I went into London, took the train from London into London and I, you know, had an interview just like everyone else. Yeah. And I ended up getting the job. And I think the reason that I got the job, at least at that time, was that year out I took in America, I worked that whole year. So I had a lot of concierge uh, experience, a lot of producing, but not for live events experience. Yeah. Um, you know, I had some things on my resume and I think that really helped with that job in particular yeah. because we worked with so many artists and producers and record labels. Yeah. Did you work with some cool people during that time? Interview some cool people or? The coolest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, Do you remember any? Like yeah. A, I, I mean, it's. Well, your mate, Travis Barker, okay. right? So Blink-182 came through. Wow. We had Alicia Keys. Ooh. It was peak, you know, mm. uh, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake time. Wow. Um, I mean, we had artists from all over the world come through. It was That's awesome. It was really special. And I worked in the talent and music department. So I was very fortunate. I was going to all the gigs because we would... Get invited to everything. Everything. Go, yeah. Even as an intern. It's cool. Which is... I mean, unheard of. So you saw Blink in England or somewhere, somewhere? Yeah, whenever anyone was coming through with a new album, single, or music video, they passed through the various countries, they passed through the various studios, and our department would coordinate with our MTV producers. That's also, so it's Viacom, so it's MTV, MTV2, yeah. VH1, VH1, you know, two, all this. All of those producers would want to interview them. So let's say Alicia Keys would be at a hotel, and we would hire a separate room and I would bring all the producers and coordinate with her tour manager and record label. And then it would be like three hours of various interviews. Oh, oh so it'd be in the same hotel. I always wonder how they did that. In she the could same just roll hotel. out down yeah. the hall. Wow. Normally they've got gigs as well. Yeah. So it's quite time, can, you know, you've got to But keeping keep them in one in. place is great. Exactly. Like, that's awesome. But also we had the Oxford Street MTV, which was a big, like three floors on in Oxford Street, you know, right yeah. in Oxford Circus. It was amazing. And also Camden, which is now where MTV okay. is. So there were studios there to interview, you know, green rooms, everything. So every, it just depended where the artist wanted to be or what was happening that day. And, yeah. you know, it's so like Foo Fighters would come through like, everyone dave gold would just like rock up and he'd be like hey like hey dave just you know come over here like no entourage no one with him just come on he's in the, he's the he's, yeah he's he's the he is man. he's very very he's the cool. real deal he's the humble uh, the, yeah yeah he's awesome yeah so Legit. everyone came through it was amazing and you know it was like peak peak music video time so mm, okay. it was really fun it was the day the, the days where you had to actually sit and wait for the video to come on the television I love that. to see it yeah, no, TRL, TRL days, right? TRL, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so we had TRL in Leicester Square, which okay. was really fun. So it was a corner office overlooking Leicester Square, which is where they have all the big movie premieres. Okay. And I remember Tom Cruise came through once and people went nuts. <laughs> and they, so they, he can look down I'm and sure. he's waving. And it was wow. it was right before, you know, maybe a mission. I mean, of who course. knows at that time. That's been cool. so many. Mm-hmm. And how long did you do that for? How long so that was like two, three years. So I started as an intern and then I slowly worked my way up and I'd made enough connections in that world where I started to freelance. Mm. So I would go and work on other events and yeah. then you would bump into the same people again and Small world, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. cure would come through Ooh. and then like, oh my gosh, I love them so much. Me They're too. amazing. There was a specific, it was Derek called mm -hmm. yeah, MTV Icon event where it was the cure. All right. Wow. And they were amazing i mean it's true the the whole set was like eerie tim burton production design the lighting it was just beautiful like i really have the fondest memories of those days because yeah. these experiences i had are so unusual because you know we get to watch artists on stage yeah but all the behind the scenes that's amazing engaging yeah. with them talking to me yeah, all that stuff yeah yeah. I hope Robert was nice. I love Robert, man. He seems so he sweet was, and shy. Well, he just came over and give you a big kiss. Yeah, wow. so sweet. Yeah, in in the in a healthy, yeah, yeah platonic, yeah, yeah. non creepy yeah. way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> just want to clarify. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a portrait of Robert Smith on my ass. Just so you guys know. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he does. Thanks, no Kat. Way. Thanks, Kat yeah. Von D. She did it. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I love Kat. I'll show you guys later if, if you're lucky. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Ooh, so, but bonus. But, um, but studying... <laughs> Creepy. The, what, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Um, no disrespect. <laughs> what does it mean when you study the Miser technique? What is that? So Sanford Meisner was one of the big acting coaches from the East Coast. And 
a lot of them had studied with a Russian Stanislavski coach and they were very moved by him. So there's Strasbourg and all types of branches of acting stemmed from that training. Okay. But everyone started of that group started to have their own ideas about how they wanted to coach. So they all branched off okay. and Sanford Meisner is one of those. Okay. And particularly with him, which is what I love the most, everyone has their own method or how they work. And what I really loved about Meisner is that it's about your imagination. Love so that. you're not bringing in something that happened to you into the work because it's not quite connected to the reality of, of the material. Yeah. Now, some people do that and it's awesome and it works for them. Just for me, I can never quite get to that level of authenticity that I wanted. If I was thinking about, you know, when I was hurt as a kid, like I tripped and I scraped my knee as a yeah. kid, it didn't really lend to what was happening in the moment. And then when I, so I started studying that in Dallas okay, um, with Michelle Condre, who still teaches I didn't now. mean to jump ahead like that, but yeah. No, so no, that's how fine. How far was that after the MTV stuff? You right. Okay. So yeah. after MTV, I, you know, at that point I'd been away from my family in the States for 11 years. Oh, yeah. That was boarding school, university, living, working in London, having the best time. But really I felt detached from my relationship with my family. So yeah. I moved back to Texas thinking I'd be there for a couple months. Like, hey, everyone, I'm back. And then I'm going to figure it out. Right. And that was not the case. I ended up being there for a few years. But in that time, I was very lost because I'd been living in England for all those years. That's where all my boarding school, university workmates yeah. were. And now I was back in Dallas where I had friends and family, but it wasn't the same after 11 nah. years. Yeah, and I, there was no MTV in Dallas. So <laughs> yeah. I did not know what to do. I... I really thank that period of time because I had to just sit and get very quiet and think about what I wanted to do with my life. Yeah. Because I was not happy. Yeah. And Were you in your 20s then? Yeah. Okay. And that's a challenging time. Yeah. Because if you don't know what you want to do, you, you start you start you either take something on that is so awful you feel so defeated in life because you're in your 20s and you feel so young and vibrant and you want to explore the world and then you just go to this dreary whatever it is for you and i did a lot of that mm -hmm. and soul searching a lot of soul searching but also with this sort of perceived pressure of okay You've got to get a job. Mm -hmm. You've got to pay rent. Mm -hmm. You've got to be an adult in this world. You have to follow the nine to five corporate job because that's safe. You can then build up a down, a, you know, enough money for a deposit, a down payment. Yeah. You know, the usual. Yeah. So many of us have been fed that for so many years. And whilst that's not bad, my artist spirit was crying mm -hmm. and I felt like I'd gone from an apex of an experience with MTV and music and traveling the world yeah. and seeing these artists in real time pursuing their endeavors yeah. but never feeling maybe good enough that I could do that not as a singer mm -hmm. you haven't heard me sing <laughs> but we will get a karaoke okay. at some point <laughs> hope so <laughs> uh, but as in other things you know yeah. and so I decided why not take a chance because I'm not doing anything else with my life that I, I don't feel like contributing to the world. I don't feel like I'm fulfilling any sense of where I want to be and what I want to do. And I had a friend who had a commercial and ph ph photography production company. And so yeah. she knew a few agents in Dallas. And I said, you know, I've worked for her in the production side of things, I said, yeah. you know, I, I feel like I've done a few voiceovers in right. the past for friends, for family. I really loved it. Yeah. I'm going to pursue that as a hobby, start making some money and see where life takes me. So she set me up with an agent in Dallas, Linda McAllister. Hi, Linda. And mm. Linda, I, and I had a headshot taken just because I thought that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. Even for voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> and I met with Linda for about 30 minutes. And she said, you know, you've got a really good look. Have you considered commercials? I was like, no, but I've got nothing to lose. 
let's have at it. Hmm. And I started booking a few commercials here wow. and there, some as extras, you know, in, in, or background actors now. And Maybe first one. What's that? Maybe first commercial, what it was? I think I booked it for TXU Energy. Okay. Texas Energy. Okay. And I had to hold, you had to go into the audition and you had like a, a, a blank poster board where they were going to write later some fun sentences gotcha. but you had to pretend that the sentences were already written on there mm. and pretend like all these different weather things were happening and you use the poster board that's what they said I was like <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing so I peeked in through the window with the <laughs> of the girl before me right and I was like oh she's doing some fun stuff that looks fun so I just went in and did what she did and I booked it and she wow. didn't book it. And I was like, thank you, whoever you were. You were great. That's amazing. Now, to be fair, I put my own spin on it. Of course. Own personality. But man. yes, I was, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. It was fun. It was lucrative. It started to become, right. yeah, I'm sure. you know, really, I was getting these lovely big paychecks. I was like, I could do this forever. <laughs> and then I started to think, well, I've jumped in. I've always loved the acting side of the world in terms of looking at actors and watching actors and yeah. TV and film. Why don't I just take an acting class and have a crack at it? Because I really don't know what else I'm doing right now. Yeah. And that's going to bring me a lot of joy. There was a lot of fear involved because that means being seen and vulnerable. And at that time I was not ready for it. Yeah. But I, really thought about when I was a kid and when I was reading all the verse and prose and drama around the counties and how much I really loved it. I felt like I had sort of, I transcended the room that I was in. I was sort of in another mind when I did that. Yeah. And I wanted more of that, but I didn't know at the time it was going to be an acting career. Yeah. 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 Because that's a big thing yeah. mm -hmm. to sign up for. So I went in acting class with Michelle Condre in Dallas, Texas. And immediately I was hooked. And I went, actually, excuse me, I didn't go to the class. I went to the audit. So you go and watch the class okay. Oh, okay. and potentially sign up later. Yeah. And she said to me, you know, there's something about you. I want to put you in my Monday afternoon class. And I said, yeah, all right, let's sure. do this. Yeah. And from then on, I just can't get enough of it. Wow. Did you ever get a voiceover gig? <laughs> <laughs> Not many, funnily really? enough. And wow. I love it. I love voiceover. That's, that's incredible because you have an amazing voice. Thank I know. you. It's extremely articulate. <laughs> Thank you, Derek Green. <laughs> this is so important. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the, fir was the first movie you got was Sounds of Silence? Was that the first one? No, that's, I think that the reason it's first on the, the IMDb list is, I don't know if it's been finished or released mm. yet. Sometimes the way that they add them to the IMDb, it depends on the date or the finished okay. state. Yeah. So the first one, well, actually I did, I did a voice for an, a, an animation, an, an animation. I think yeah, I was. Yeah, you did. I saw them there too. Yeah, I think the I cartoon, was. Cartoon, I forgot what it was called though. Me too. I your name oh, on there. My brain. They can look it up. People can look yeah. it up. Okay. I think Were you a I dog was, or something? Or I, I was maybe a dog or a llama nice. or something. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. know. It was great. Yeah. It was really fun. Okay. And then I started to book, what did I book? I booked some things in Louisiana, actually. Because Do you have an agent at that point and a manager I had, and all that? Or so just? in Dallas, my agent was my commercial agent and theatrical agent and voiceover agent. Oh, that's she awesome. was everything. That's oh, wow. So she just would submit me for all of it which was so helpful awesome. because she could just keep track of it, it was like great is yeah. there a point where she comes to you and, and says mm. you're ready no <laughs> <laughs> go get them tiff no but no. i i was very lucky that i could be very honest with her okay and when i decided after maybe two and a half years of that so two and a half years of studying of, of that of studying mm -hmm. uh booking commercials okay. and industrials and voiceovers i started booking some small roles in louisiana and so i would drive out to baton rouge wow. and i had an agent there at the time as well. Yeah. And I would go to auditions there or I would book there in New Orleans and work for a week. That's where G.I. Joe Retaliation was shot. Wow. So I went out there for a week and you film it and then you go back to Dallas and you keep auditioning. Right. And I just started to feel like something was happening 
not necessarily with my career, but with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where I love Dallas and it will always be like home for me. But I really thought I was just going to be there for a pit stop. And something started to shift that, okay, now is my time to start thinking what's next for me. So I thought, well, do I go to New York or do I go to LA? Those felt like the two good options. Yeah. Best place in the world. Yeah. Amazing. (laughs) We love New York. We love LA. I didn't feel right going back to London mm-hmm. and I, 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 it felt like I would be going back and it would be so different. Right. Yeah. It's hard to go back as we know. It's never the same. And I thought, well, I grew up in California when I was a kid. Love the ocean, love the beach, love the 75 and sunny every day. Oh yeah. Why don't I just do that? And so when I told my agent, Linda, that I was going to do that, she was so supportive and she said, absolutely go for it. And so I sold all my stuff. Wow. I packed my car up, which I still drive now. Awesome. Sexy Lexi. And <laughs> she's 22 years old. Wow. And yeah, That's amazing. amazing. 188,000 miles. Love you, Lexi. And I That's know. so cool. And packed up my two cats, two bags, and then sent a few other things over ahead of time. Drove out here with my ex. We landed in Glendale and stayed at one of these extended stay hotels. Wow. What year yeah. would this be? End of 2011. I arrived December 30th, 2011. Okay. And woke up on New Year's Day and went to Venice Beach to sort of call in the new year. It was very (laughs) emotional. Yeah. It was such a big move. And you know what it's like moving to a new city. It's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. You're young and hopeful. Did you know any people (laughs) in LA? I knew a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, But that's about it. Because it's difficult to make friends here if you don't know anyone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It really is. It's a strange old city like that. Mm-hmm. And it's got to be intimidating too, coming from Dallas and then coming here to actually get into acting and just so many yeah. actors and here and everything. So it many. It is. I had the I fortune of sort of ignorance is bliss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't overthink it. Okay. Good. Yeah. Which really helped because mm-hmm. I just decided I'm doing it. Yeah. And I moved out and I just said to myself, well, I've survived until this, you know, up until this point, I'll just keep going. Yeah. And at that point, you know, I'd had sort of real world experience working. Yes, totally. True. And so I had this mindset of, well, I'll figure it out. And yeah. I'm I'm different. So I, I'm going to approach it differently. Yeah. I, I didn't go to drama school. I didn't go to a conservatory and study. Mm-hmm. I've got that as an advantage because I'm not, by the way, I, I don't know if this is what people who have studied feel, but I just felt... I had this sense of freedom knowing that LA is and Hollywood is really a place where you can come and reinvent yourself and not have a a higher school education or a particular degree that they look at and then invite you in. It's true. You can join any class. If you're good, you keep going and you'll book a job. No, it's true. It's totally way different for sure. Um, is that what you did? The did standards are different. I guess it's different, right? Yeah, probably. Right? Than yeah. Like in England? In England, I've heard sure. that it really helps if you train at one of the big schools there. Okay. Right. That's important. But also, I resume. think that's wonderful. I, yeah. I wish I'd done that. It sounds fabulous. No, totally. I just couldn't go back on myself and do that. I felt I actually considered joining a studio in New York for two years. Mm-hmm. And something in me just said, if you want to move to L.A., do it now. Start pounding the pavement. Start building your foundation there because it is going to take a really long time. Yeah. And I didn't want to sort of, quote unquote, lose two years of my life studying when I could move here and study with also some of the best acting coaches in the world here. Yeah, for sure. So that's what I did. It's great. I like all the time you put into like, it seems like when you focus on something like you can do, I'm doing the military. So I'm going to dedicate all these years to studying and all this up training, taking the test. And then like, okay, now I'm going to try this. I'm going to put all my, like you, you worked hard on everything you did. When I wanted, Focused. that's it. Yeah. When I wanted something and it was meaningful, I really, I still do that to this day. Yeah. It's sort of, I'm unstoppable in that way. As in, I don't get in my own way. Right. Yeah. A lot of people right. do that. A lot of people get in yes. their own way. Yeah. Definitely. Like you were saying in their head, you know, in their head. Yeah. And it's really great that you're able to step outside the box. I think that's important for a lot of people to, to, challenge themselves yeah you know to really put yourself in that situation where it may not be very comfortable Mm. you know but that's when a lot of things really shine and you start to learn about yourself i would also say 
just so I can really be clear, I was scared and <laughs> I had a bit of, you know, arrogance and that helped. As you should. As you should. Totally. Believe which in yourself. has since sort of <laughs> been beaten out of me <laughs> living here for a decade. Yeah. Uh, so I think I shed a lot of that because. Right. You get uh, humbled, you mean? Like you get out here? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 There is nothing like living in Los Angeles as an actor, musician, artist, True. it is a different beast. And, you know, because in New York, you have so many people are li- live in, and work in New York that who aren't in the industry. Yeah. Right. Whereas in Los Angeles, most people are in the industry 100%. Of, of one way or another or no people yeah. or tried it. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's great because you're surrounded by so many people that you love the industry yeah. and creative artists. But there's an element of you're just always in that grind on the hamster wheel. Did you have a lot of ejection at first out here? So much. So much. So I keep an Excel document audition list. So I have a decade worth of auditions saved on my Excel list. And I can tally how many rejections I've had. I mean, hundreds, hundreds, Mm -hmm. hundreds. Which is great because I'm really lucky. Uh, Many people don't get hundreds of auditions right. true yeah yeah true so i've now learned that each rejection is a step forward that wasn't meant for me if yeah. i did the work sometimes i would get so in my head really early on in my career i was very i was very worried about what people thought of me yeah mm-hmm. As you know, I think we can all attest to that. 100%. And I was terrified. And your worst critic too. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I would really beat myself up about things if I didn't get it or if I got, I got quite close on a few things. And then it started to dawn on me, well, maybe this isn't an industry of rejection. Maybe it's an industry of longevity. Mm-hmm. I love if that. If you're willing to work hard and stick it out again and again and again and again, because no one rings you to say, you didn't get it a hundred times. You only get yeah. that phone call if you're really close. Mm-hmm. So I would just sort of not hear anything. Okay. And if you don't have any other auditions or if you don't have a full life outside of auditioning, that's when your mind starts playing games on you. Okay. So I started to release any of that anxiety around getting the job or not by going into the ocean yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> meeting friends for dinner yeah going bowling yes. right right things like Get that your mind off it just exactly. living you gotta live too yeah but you i mean to. i mean it's expensive to live in la in a big city and, and so since you do a lot of auditions i know a lot of people struggle i mean how yeah. are you able to survive you know if it's a great question. I was she really was homeless. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. Go ahead. Here's my box. Uh, <laughs> I I actually made quite a good chunk of money in Dallas before I left from okay. all these commercials. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, and right. the residuals kept coming through, which awesome. really helped. Right. I also sold a bunch of stuff, including some jewelry, before I left Dallas. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Grandma, uh, for the jewelry. But not your car, though. And not sexy Lexi. Not no. Sexy Lexi. I love that that's still part Absolutely. of your journey. It's, it is. I think that's amazing. I think my friends are like, Tiffany, it's time to let her go. And I'm like, I'm not ready yet. I but didn't have that sense. I was, I know nothing about cars. So well, I was just like, oh, this is nice. She, she is, she got me to LA. She has gotten me all over the place. Yeah. And I love her, but her check engine light is on more than it's Damn. not. I know. So I think she's letting me know it's it's time. I'd be like, right, um, right. I kind of killed it on Snowfall. I think I'm going to treat myself <laughs> to a car. I'll get to that anyway. Okay. But, uh, yeah, but, but so um, what was your first major thing you got that was like, you were so excited? First major thing I got was in 2014, I booked a series regular role on a sci-fi show called Ascension. Yeah, I have that. Yeah. And wasn't G.I. Joe before that? Yes. So Because that's a big deal, isn't it? Well, it was a big deal for those that got a lot of screen time. I know you're, you're a British <laughs> expert on there. But I was. I, but it's cool because you did study military things and you're on the... I don't know. It's kind of cool. Yes. Huh? No, it was brilliant. And The Rock was in it. That's right. sick. It was amazing. He was super... Well, I didn't meet him, but he he, <laughs> he walked in as our characters were walking out, and okay. he was super charismatic and really nice. I heard he's on, I heard he's awesome. He was great, yeah. and John M. Chu um, directed that, so he's Crazy Rich Asians and all that. So he's had a everyone sort of really jumped off. It's so fun seeing that. But now. even if you have a small part in something like that, it may seem small to you. 
Mm. You, you, you still made it into the movie. Oh, so so that, that's still yeah. a good part of your resume, right? First of all, I'm learning when I am sitting there because it was a big conference scene. It was all the leaders from the world in this yeah, big. That, yeah. So I am seeing people who have been working for 30 years and I am watching them. Uh, yeah. And also you have to time it really well because it's such a big room. Whatever line you have, you have to remember everyone's lines before you and you do oh, not want right. to be the one person oh, yeah. who forgets your line Hell in no. these really well-planned and timed scenes because the, the, the stakes are so high yeah, at this point. That's stressful yeah, yeah. thinking about. I know. <laughs> really. And if you, and if you do, are, do you really get, are you saying like, why? Does not, that happen? No. Not for me at that time. Okay. All but right. any of the other main actors right. would have. But I auditioned for that part. I sent a taped audition from Dallas wow. to Louisiana. I booked it. That was a really big deal. I felt I was on track. And so absolutely being in that room, yeah. three days we shot that one scene. Oh it was awesome. <laughs> and then, of course... The, one of the executive producers comes and sits next to me and they put him in the film as a bit of a laugh. It was really funny oh, because wow. they needed a seat filler. He was super nice. And again, just asking questions, yeah. learning Absorbing what it, it means. All. Exactly. And it was yeah. brilliant. Right, right. So then the Ascension thing, that, that was like, you got three episodes on that, 2014. Yeah, we shot it as slightly more. We shot it as six episodes, but they decided to change it to a three-episode miniseries. Okay. But we shot it in Montreal, and it was my first time in Canada. Nice. And was what it the a winter? place. No, okay. luckily oh, it was the summer, you? July yeah. and August. Perfect. And it was absolutely stunning. And it really sang to my European sensibilities because of the cobblestone right. streets and the dual language. Yes. And it was so beautiful. I had so, we, had, we all really had a blast there. It was so beautiful. Montreal's a party city, just so we know. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh boy. Yeah. A beautiful food city as well. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Are you, are you vegan at this time? I'm veggie at that time. At that time, yeah. There was a place called the Common Saw I used to go to. It was like a... A buffet in Toronto. Oh, you're in Montreal, my bad. But it was like, the, like in the '90s, it was the most amazing place you can go and get like anything you want, like mm -hmm. fake meats and all, whatever. Anyway, okay. but this, I'm sure there's like so you're veggie and yes. why and why veggie? So what I, made you make that move? Well, you know, I grew up in Texas where you have barbecue. Oh yeah. And I grew up in England on a farm where they farmed sheep and cattle and arable, which is you know the wheat, etc. And we would have a Sunday roast with the family every week and that was meat and potatoes and i was used to eating no problem right. not even thinking about eating chicken mm -hmm. pork fish beef but i never ate veal or lamb okay because they're babies mm. and that was how my brain worked at the time that was also how farmers made their living yes and i was living on that farm with my aunt and uncle and they were providing for me food on the table so they're mm -hmm. There, it was a small farm and they knew all the, the butchers and they knew, you know, the abattoirists and it was sort of, it was very simple and I didn't really think anything of it. And then I moved back to Texas and I would eat a little bit of maybe chicken here and there and some fish, but I'd really started to pull away from eating any pork or, or turkey or red meat for whatever reason, again, like fish and chicken were still okay in my head. Yeah. And then one day, the best way I can describe it is I moved to, now I'm living in Silver Lake. After Glendale, I moved to Silver Lake. <laughs> right. And I was unpackaging the raw chicken. And as we know, you can't have raw chicken around anything because yeah. of all the germies. And I had a physical reaction to it where I felt so gross and disgusted by it and i'd wow. never had that feeling before huh. and i think what had happened was i was starting to read a little bit more and i was starting to hear a little bit more and it slowly started to sink into my psyche that this is not the life i want to be living eating these animals yeah. and you know, long gone are the days where it was just the little chicken who gave you your little egg, breakfast <laughs> eggs, right. and that was it. We are so far away from that, although everyone's trying to get back to that in some way, which is, you know, it is what it is. But where the hell did that chicken come from and what life did it live before this? Yeah. And the juices, it's so gross, as we all know. And I just was like, I, I can't do this anymore. And I just stopped. 
I stopped. Cold turkey. Everything. No pun intended. Yeah, definitely wow. the coldest of turkey. Oh, and man. I was done. But then Fish I. Fish as well? Like, yep. Just done, animals done, done. in general. Wow. Right. Done. Right. And I then <laughs> started to be okay with still eating a bit of egg, a bit of cheese out and about at the restaurants. Did you notice a difference when you stopped of, in any type of way as yeah. far as mentally, physically? or 100%. Okay. I wasn't as wow. fatigued. Uh-huh. Digestion was much better. I felt lighter. I felt less bloated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100%. It happened very quickly for me. And then I would eat some, you know, because it's at that time in my brain i thought well it's fine when if i can still go out to a restaurant and we can order a margarita pizza and i can still share and people with the cheese yeah yeah, people are like okay with vegetarians yeah yeah Yeah, cheese is like the last (laughs) thing man it is it's the last bastion people are okay with vegetarians i love it's true that's what you know people (laughs) are like oh you're veggie okay yeah and but there were still people who would like cook meat and put it next to my veggie food i'm like Please don't do that. And right. please I don't, don't like that either. Please don't put your meat touched fork <laughs> on my veggie food. Like, why are you doing or that? Or your juices. Yeah. yeah, yeah it yeah. was like there was a disconnect and that really bothered me. Mm-hmm. Re- First of all, I love food. So don't touch my food generally. Yeah. But don't touch my food with your fork, right. your dirty fork. Yeah, I yeah, hated yeah. it. Right. And so it really started to bother me. And then that's when a few friends I'd heard you know, talk about veganism. And of course I knew about it. There were some friends in Dallas who had been vegan and I just kind of started thinking about it. And then I realized that actually it's what I wanted, but I sort of waited a couple of months to admit that to myself. Yeah. Maybe maybe two and a half, three years after being veggie, it really started to hit me. I was like, the butter, the cheese, the milk, mm-hmm. the, all of it. I was like, the eggs, I was like, this isn't good. This isn't good. This isn't. My body was just really telling me this. And then, oh God, this is really a tough moment. I watched the first 12 minutes of Earthlings. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I had to switch off, which is a testament to the work done on it because it's actually, it's in your face. Yeah. Yeah. And I full on sobbed for five minutes. I'm going to get really emotional. I full on sobbed for five minutes. I saw some things that I don't want to say here. And I... I have a very sensitive memory. So yeah. I remember all of it mm-hmm. and I just couldn't bear. I couldn't bear that I was going to be a part of that. Wow. Mm-hmm. I might not be doing that right. in yeah. the moment, but I'm part of the problem. Shout out to Sean Monson who made that documentary. Yeah. yeah. Also, that's the, that's the doctor got Tony Canal too to, to cross over to. Yeah. That documentary is really powerful. It's very powerful. And I've heard m- multiple people say that you, it, it's, it's tough to watch, yeah. of course. And I think what we're so good at as humans is taking away our sensitivity we mm-hmm. can just desensitize very oh yeah to everything especially these days so everything. no one wants to see that no so no. ignorance is bliss right yeah and i i just couldn't and so it just kept coming back to me like tiffany you need to listen to yourself yeah it doesn't have to be forever why not just try it yeah. embrace it mm-hmm. learn something new be curious totally so i made the decision to become vegan the day after thanksgiving like six or seven years ago Mm -hmm. because even though I was not eating any meat at the table, there was so much cream and butter and eggs. And I'm thinking we are one dinner party on this day here. What about the millions of people every day eating this? Mm -hmm. And I really was turned off. So the day after I just made the decision and I've not looked back since. That's amazing. A lot of people do it around Thanksgiving, to be honest. There's a lot of people have anniversaries oh, yeah? around Thanksgiving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. It's just like, just people like, fuck this tradition. Like or like last, I'm being forced. The last like, feast. Yeah, like I have to eat this or not. <laughs> like a lot of people do it, you know, maybe, maybe in rebellion even of, of their family or tradition, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But that's around the time that's like, like why do we have to eat this on this holiday? Do you remember the last animal that you ate? Oh, that's a good one. I it probably would have been... A very simple chicken and veggie dish. Yeah. It was that simple and roasted chicken or something like that. And then the last buttery, right. you know, veggie dish was like a sweet potato pie, which had butter and milk and cream in it. Yeah. And now I just make it vegan. It's fantastic. Right, right. Yeah. There's so many. I mean, I there's so many. Toby, do you remember? 
Man. The last thing I ate? That's a great question. 1988. Oh, my God, man. 1987. Uh -huh. I was 17. I graduated from high school. I was dating Shelly Shackley. Oh, my God. Oh, hang on. I'm, I'm, going, into, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to where I, I was. I wanted to hear this. Memory yeah, lane. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, absolutely. I was listening to the break hardcore. Down, I was listening to the inspirational band. Listen to the high cores. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, you inspired. 87. Not for nothing. Like, I get kicked out of the house at 17, so 16. My mom would make meatloaf when I was a kid. So maybe when I was... Honestly, man, I didn't eat a lot of meat growing up because my mom would make this meatloaf. Okay. Or she'd make fish sticks when the microwave. Oh, the only fish, fish I sticks. ever had was probably 1985 when I was 15, living at home. My mom made fish sticks in the microwave. That's probably the only the, time. I'd fished one time my whole life. Right. I fucking hated fish, and she made these gnarly frozen things Got in the it. microwave. They were yeah, terrifying. Yeah, I remember fish sticks. So then I didn't really fuck with fish. Right. The meatloaf is probably the last meat I probably ate living at home. Probably so when meat, I was, like I you, you can't visualize like this is the last time no but you know what's fucked up is when i had it possible for the first time it gave me a flashback oh. to my mom's meatloaf mm -hmm. wow like wow. that taste yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. that fucked me up i was like holy shit like i ain't tasted that since the 80s Interesting. Yeah. but it wasn't like a particular thing like this is my last vegan meal it was like i'm listening to this music that's singing about this shit mm -hmm. you know then i start seeing the pita uh videos at the punk shows and mm -hmm. the pamphlets they're handing out Right when I get to New York, it's over because like all the shows and people I'm hanging out with, it's all this animal rights stuff. So that's what's just like when I was 18, I was like, "Fuck this, I'm not doing this anymore." Mm -hmm. That's when I went vegetarian, you know. Right. But right. It, it was it was the music more than it was the music and the animal rights for me. Like right. Watching those videos, it wasn't like a moment. It was like I can't do this no more. It was I moved out on my own, and the people I moved in with in New York were all vegetarians. They were all straight edge. In Queens, yeah. So I was I know, part I of this yeah. crew of people that were doing something so cool. And it was helping the planet and all this. Sh I don't know. It just happened then. It was like that. Yeah. Anyway. Damn, it was a strong influence. What about you? What was your last meat you ate? I was a turkey sub at this place called Grubs. And okay. I, and I was thinking about this. I was like, yeah, that. You know, I used to like the taste of meat, but it was something I would always had my entire life. So uh, yeah, you grew up eating it. So I don't know. Like, you know, if I would eat to eat it now, that if I would have the same feeling of it, it was just my mind was geared around it. Like, I like this because everybody, this is what I know, you know. So it's a weird thing, but I remember that day, and it was like Fourth of July, and I specifically in my mind, I was like, I'm going to stop. It was like 15 or 16 years old, and I was like, I am stopping. Not because of uh, the planet or the animals. I mean, I had read, started reading a lot of different books. I was friends with a lot of those people you were talking about. Yeah. You moved to Queens or very, um, had a big impact. But I was just like, I was more of like, I want to see if this is really going to make a difference. Ah. Like in my mm. mentality, physically, and my general being. I was just so radical and just so, like, I, you know, willing to challenge anything that was put in front of me mm -hmm. that i that major thing in my mind was like i'm gonna see if this is for real the real deal i need to try it myself to see if i notice a difference so wow yeah and i mean, it did yeah true story is that i got a job at subway after i became vegetarian and because my only had one tattoo that said meat is murder on my arm they made me, I was the only employee at Subway that had to wear a long sleeve short shirt because they didn't want me pushing my beliefs on right. people. So I had me, yeah, because of the tattoo. Wow. It's fucking crazy. That's Fuck crazy. you, Subway. Anyway, okay. I, I, I'm sorry to jump up to say, I was just, no, I'm no, always no, like to ask people like if they remember, um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, yeah, I think it's so interesting because clearly we all made a decision at some point. Yeah. And what is the decision? And I... Mine was building for a while. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it feels like I just decided one day, no more cheese, no more eggs, no more butter. Mm -hmm. And I honestly have never felt better. I'm on seven years. Awesome. And it feels not long enough. And I can't wait to make up for time and be yeah. more years vegan than I ever ate anything else yeah i mean for me it's like for all of us there's, you, there's no such thing as a perfect human no. let alone a perfect vegan but i know in my conscience that every day i'm doing the best i can you know to live a cruelty free life mm -hmm. and help the environment and do my part and my carbon footprint and everything i'm trying to do every day is live the life that i um choose to live and help the planet the best i can i'm not perfect you know what i mean that you can't 
I'll, I'll go in an Uber no, and I'll no sit on is. leather seats in an Uber, or there'll be mm-hmm. leather seats in an airplane, or the chemicals when I go to the dentist to clean my teeth might be tested. Who fucking knows? But we do our, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah. you yes. do your best yes. every day to do your best. And I, and I have a guilt free conscience that I know I'm doing the best I can. You know right. what I mean? And that's all I can do as humans is just do the best I can. Oh, yeah, the tremendous impact. Uh, Thank you. Know. you. Okay, back to you. Okay. okay. Um, Ascension. Now back to Ascension. Ascension. So that that was the big thing for you. For too. people that haven't seen Ascension, what can you give us a. Yes, it was set essentially during the the, the Cold War race of trying to get to the moon first. Yeah. And there was a bit of a twist in the show, which is JFK had plans to send off a ship with humans to space to continue to populate. Wow. Because we didn't know what was going to happen at the time. And so that's what it was extrapolated from. And we meet our crew on the ship 51 years into a 100-year journey to another planet. Jesus. But we set off in the 60s. And it's a bit of a time capsule. Okay. So we've lost communication with Earth. So all the interior design, all the hairstyles, all the clothes are all 60s. That's amazing. Which is That's really fun. fun. Yeah. And the production team built out a stunning atrium, which is in the show, which is the middle of the ship where everyone crosses paths and goes to all the bars and the different rooms off of it so there was a lift you know an elevator in there where was that located this was on a set in montreal Montreal. okay and it was just so so fun and so the twist of the show spoiler alert but it was 2014 so i think i can say it now is that actually we never left earth and it's all a control system and so it's very interesting and it was really good fun. We had a lot of fun shooting it. And, you know, it comes with all of the classism, sexism, racism, yep. um, you know, so- socioeconomic ties with that time. And so there were different elements of the show that were all playing out at the same time. That's awesome. And you're a big fan of sci-fi. I am quite, actually. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> How many seasons was that show? So that was one. Okay. And so get back to L.A. from shooting that, feeling on top of the world. Of course, yeah. And then the show gets canceled. Boo. Ah, man. It's rough. Right. That is rough. It's rough. But look, you've got to go through this. Right. And so. That's a big part of the whole, your whole career. It all. really it's... is. And it was really tough. But I had enough energy in me to really start approaching my auditions in a in a new way because look i just booked a really yeah, good job yeah under your belt so yeah. look at me and then i didn't work for a few years for and it a was few years? yeah and it was honestly one of the toughest toughest moments in my acting oh because that was life. 2014 and then that was, season was 2016 yeah so there's enough there where it feels days turn into weeks turn into months turn into years and it feels so depleting did you want to quit Absolutely. Okay. Wow. Because I wasn't sure I was strong enough. They tell you, they being the proverbial they, <laughs> yeah. when you start acting, if there is anything else that you can think of that you want to do in this life, do that instead. Right. You have to want it more than booking the job, getting money, being yeah. rich, famous, being a working actor, getting an agent, getting a manager. It is insane. Yeah. There is no linear path in this business. It's not like starting as an intern, being mm-hmm. going up the ladder to assistant, producer, yeah. all the way up. You are on a roller coaster. Yeah, the highs are really high, but the lows are probably really low. It's rough. It's rough out there. Fuck. And when you're friends with actors or you're right. dating actors or people in the industry, it's, it can be challenging because you see other people working or you're commiserating with people and no one's working. Were you dating actors? I have dated a few actors. <laughs> so if they're working and you're not, yes, it's wrong. There must be some sort of like it not is. jealousy, not something. No, there's a competitive nature to it. Damn. You want to be supportive, but you're also like, oh, for fuck's sake, why am I not booking something? Mm. So it's challenging in that way too. And, you know, you want, we're all sensitive beings. Gosh, right. we're all artists here, yeah. you know. But and it's not really totally. about you personally. No. 
at all. It's not. Right. I mean, unless yeah, you, but, you're you know. making it, unless you're going in there and doing something really stupid and then they're like, absolutely, we're not working with this right. insane person. Right. But it's hard not to take it personal. For sure. Absolutely. Like, is it me? You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't your fault the show got canceled, but yeah. fuck. I tell you, when you get really close to something, in 2015, so after the High of Ascension, I started to get very close a lot. There was one time where I went into five consecutive different auditions, and it was down to me and someone else those five times. And I, um, it's exciting because you're so close and your reps are really excited. You have to train yourself not to get too excited? Or yes. Not to, okay. You do. And the way, the way that I handle it now is I just move on to something else. Now, if you have a lot of auditions coming up, old pilot seasons, you would get three, four, five, six auditions in a week. Yeah, you have, busy. that's it. You have no time to think about the, the last one. Yes. But when you don't, and it's one audition here, and it's one audition there, and like, you start thinking, what is happening? Yeah. You haven't heard anything, especially when you're close. Mm -hmm. When it's down to you and one more person, you have a 50% chance, and you don't get it, and you don't get it often. There is a moment, that's when I felt, I don't, I don't know if I can do this, because I don't want to be the almost person. Yeah, right. I almost got it. I don't want to wake up at 80 years old and be like, I almost did it. Yeah. Almost did it. Were we ever up, was ever you and a friend? No. Just, no I don't. Know. Actually, that's a great question. I would have to look back at my Excel document. <laughs> right. I'll yeah. check that back in. that tricky too? Like you get yeah. you're excited for your friend, but it's like. I have to say I have really awesome friends. You've met some of them. Yeah. Um, and we have developed a really good support system for one another that so much so that I have auditioned taped friends for a role and then we swap places and I audition for the same role and we send it off to our reps. Oh, wow. And wow. and there is no there's no beef there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if they want that person, yeah. they don't want me and vice versa. And there are seven thousand factors that go into this. That's yeah. an exaggeration, but it's not far off. So yeah. many people have to approve you. Yeah. yeah. And if one person doesn't approve you, you don't get it. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if nine of the 10 people want you, you don't get it. Yeah. And you want to support your friends and be there for them. Too. Absolutely. It's in the same genre. We do the same thing with each other. We're in music business. We're in two different style bands. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're stoked for each other. Mm -hmm. Cool things happen. Absolutely. Cool tours, cool shows. That's it. You know what yeah. I mean? Recognition or like a record does well or. That's it. You know, that's how it's supposed to be. I feel like there's already, there are already so many things stacked against us. Right. Why would we turn on each other? when we could really help each other and promote one another. But it yeah. is challenging because we're talking about a livelihood here, right? We're talking about money and yeah. and job security, which mm -hmm. you know barely exists. And so when you get it or when your friend gets it, you have to celebrate the wins. Yeah. Because they, they can be few and far between for a lifetime. You don't know. True. Mm -hmm. Are you working a real job after Ascension between that and the next thing? Or you just, you're, you're good, you're chilling? There were there have been times over the years up until recently where I would be a personal assistant. Okay. Okay. And that was good because I'm, I, I quite like that. Yeah. And so it, it's a, you know, I didn't want to go and work at a, um, a, a big job, yeah, which yeah, yeah. didn't offer you any flexibility for auditions. So yeah. working as a personal assistant allowed me to do that. And I'm, uh, some of them were in the industry, so I'm learning from them right. as yeah. well. And that provided a lot of flexibility because everyone, you know, knows that I just go off and do an audition for an hour and I come back and I do my work. It's great. Yeah. Even even like a Hill Caesar or even like SWAT because there's one episode. Even those, you still get good money from those, right? Residuals yes. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. You normally, you, if, if I book something like a uh, Hail Caesar, yeah. I would get in that role, I would get scale. Okay. And so the union sets a certain amount yeah. and I would get that and then I get whatever residual amount comes off of that. So I still get checks now from Hail Caesar. That's awesome. And when I open my residual checks, honestly, I always say a little thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and then I deposit them and I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank Even you. Even if you're in there for like less than a couple of minutes, it moves. That's you it. Still, I got friends, actor friends who some of their most money weren't even from major roles. It was just like, I, I don't want, I'll tell you after the pod, right. but just like this one in particular that my, my man, my friend gets so much money from it still forever. Because That's, of who the, the rain star was. Right. His shit was like less than five minutes. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how that That's stuff dream. works. Yeah. It's like, dream. You're, like, you're, you're like, I didn't realize you were in you, even though that was the one episode. I fucking love that show. You <laughs> so, watch yeah, you, right? I love it. It yeah. was great. So the funny thing about you is oh I was God. at the very end 
of the final episode of season two. Yeah. And you won't really see me. You'll see like the side <laughs> again. Like I, it's funny. Mystery woman. I am. I either <laughs> am like this sort of you, you blink and you miss me or I get killed off. It's really funny. I'm like the Sean Bean of, <laughs> of my time. Although I don't think I make nearly as much money as Sean do you Bean. Like the, do you, do you, were you a fan of that show? Are you? Yes, I was it's actually. Amazing, it was mental. It it's is. mental. I know. It's, it's so. That actor is incredible. Yeah. He's great. Mm. Penn Badgley. Yeah. He's wonderful. And um, so I really enjoyed that. Again, you know, I have to say I had to swallow my pride uh, a little bit taking that job because it was a non-speaking, non-facing role. Mm. And I'd been a series regular before. And this is this is how this industry can work. Yeah. You know? yeah. And the roller coaster. Yeah. But I hadn't worked in a while. It's a paycheck. It's an opportunity. It's an experience. But no one is really looking at me and asking me a lot of questions i'm there for a job and i do the job and i'm grateful it's for almost the like job. your background the background work yes yeah, an extra yeah and wow. i and i had to be okay with that but immediately after i did that i booked siren 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 which is and that's 10 episodes you did yeah 10 episodes which was a full season season three shot in vancouver british columbia Again, it's nice there. I like Vancouver. Oh, it's nice. stunning. Yeah, it's great city. My first time there, and I joined a currently running cast and crew. So they'd been together for yeah. two and a half years. So is that, that intimidating? Point. It is, except I lucked out because they're the most amazing people. Yeah, they welcomed you. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. really, really did. Yeah. You feel more pressure like that? For something yes, like that? But it's also really exciting because I can come in and shake things up as a character, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my character on the show is quite an isolated character. Oh, yeah. And so it was really, <laughs> yeah, so it was Tia. So it was really fun to sort of be the outlier, joining the cast and crew, and also being able to play that as the character. Yeah. Terrified badass, I gotta say. <laughs> the villainous Jeez. Tia. I was Shake, terrified. Really shaking things up, right? On there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was terrified when I saw it. I was like, <laughs> you're like, check it out. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna just... Oh. Oh my God! Oh goodness! Oh, oh goodness! Oh, what's she doing? Jesus! Oh golly, that's not very proper. <laughs> no, I know it was great. Yeah, that was I know awesome. you texting Derek and like, holy shit! <laughs> Immediately, I was just like, "There, well, let me just check the. What the hell is going on here? Are you serious? I know it's that awesome. was so badass. It's a great opening. There. It's oh, crazy yeah, when you see a friend sick, on TV or a movie, and you know opening. them, and, and you see them on there doing some other it's, type of role. I'm, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, completely opposite from your demeanor. I was just, <laughs> oh, and my friends got killed, and I was like almost crying. Like, oh, that's my friend, but it's just a movie. You know, I know. you see him like it's like, mm-hmm. why'd know, you kill him for? It's my boy. It's personal. Yeah, yeah it becomes very personal. So how long you in Vancouver for that? So we shot yeah. that over five and a half months. So I again I landed in summer, maybe July, yeah. and we shot all the way to mid December. So that was 2019. Yeah. So just before COVID. Wow. And I really made the most of it. I also made non acting friends up there Good. who really showed me around and everyone locals. yes, yeah. all the locals there, everyone in BC is fit and outdoorsy and healthy. Like we think we're fit and hikers here in LA. No, 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 no. You go to British Columbia and they will kick your ass. Everyone is so sporty and outdoorsy. And I loved it. And it's so beautiful. I mean, you're in the middle of the city and you look up and there are all these mountains and hills. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's one of the number one cities to live. Yeah, it's stunning. Oh, five, yeah. Is it expensive to live there? Yes. It's definitely gotten more and more expensive okay. even because there are a ton of productions up mm, there as well. It's and cheaper it to has, shoot there, right? It is. Yeah. Oh, the winter is brutal? Yes. Okay. But not brutal like Toronto or okay. Montreal. Okay. But okay. brutal, I think, for us Angelinos. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Anything under 70, so we're like, woo, give rain, me a jacket. I only know like, this because my brother lives in Seattle, so it's... Yeah. Some similar weather okay. conditions going Pacific on. Northwest is yeah. stunning. It is. Absolutely. It's very atmospheric. I feel like it's like a Hallmark movie, you know, and you like Ooh. I love Christmas Hallmark movies if anyone in Lifetime. Yeah, yeah. I'm a <laughs> Lifetime guy. Yeah, nice. Okay. Oh, I, I accept that. that. I yeah. It. I accept that. I'm a Christmas guy too. Nice. <laughs> but there's a lot of rain up there too. I think rain would trip me out and like that's Black why it's clouds. so lush. Yeah, yeah. it's super yeah. green and fresh. That's air. true too. And yeah. I love that from England. Could you live there though? I don't think so <laughs> i would love to have a, a house on the right. on the Ooh. water 
and we could all just go up there and hang out anytime. But that's, I, that's I, a good I goal. love, yeah, I, I think it's good to have goals. I agree. <laughs> I love 75 and sunny. Yep. And we're so lucky. I mean, we bloody pay for it. But that's. you, but when you leave LA, it's so much. I, I love coming back Me to too. LA. I love going to places like that, like yeah, visiting spots. Absolutely. I, I, maybe I could live here, but I've only been here for three days. But then you come back to Cali, like, <laughs> This is heaven, dude. Yeah, heaven. It's fun to talk about other places. It is. And go hang out there for a little mm-hmm. while and see. Mm-hmm. Like, I do like Seattle, but the rain would kill me, man. Yeah. Yeah. For like five I or know. six seven But your skin straight. would be so hydrated. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're all dry lizards out here. Not I. I stay away from that sun. Yeah, <laughs> you're so, um, so, Siren, after all the stuff you've done leading up to it, Siren was like a big deal. You know, Tobes, it totally was because at that point, I had... I had a thought you know what I'm not sure what happens next yeah and I have to let go of this expectation that I'm going to work again wow. or work as a series regular or earn any money or <laughs> that's scary. anything it's yeah, so terrifying. scary but that's part of your career like for us it's like okay we got we know the tours now right then we have a tour in November I mean it could right now things are crazy but you know what I mean like at least we know that we're booking our stuff ahead of time and right. we can book it because we're in the band we control that we say, I want to play a show here, and we get a show book. Do you know what I mean, Derek? True, true. Or is you, it just like, I don't know. You create your art. Y- yeah. Whereas right. as an actor, just as an actor, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I am I am waiting for other people to hire me. Right. Which isn't great um, at all. You have for to count on other people. Suffering. Yes, I do. And still believe in yourself. Yes. And all, yeah. Which yeah. is why I just want to say I encourage everyone to create. We should all just be, we could really do well to just create. doesn't have to be for money. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. create because it's so fulfilling. And 100%. that is something I didn't do enough of. Mm-hmm. And it really, it hurt, it devastated me because I was seeing everyone else creating. And I, I was like, but I'm doing so well as an actor. Like, I want to be an actor. But it, it doesn't matter. I, I, there was this sense well, of. Well, now it makes a lot more sense when yeah. I see different actors who are writing yes and yeah. a lot more than producing ever. absolutely and, and, it, and actually i have to say a lot of times it's so much better yeah you know it's just incredible to Good see point. them acting in something they wrote or yep. they did or they were a part of they created and it's beautiful it is it's very see. authentic yes, yes i agree yeah and so siren was a huge win but what was so interesting as we were saying earlier i was I was letting go of that expectation of anything mm-hmm. at that yeah. time. And I was buying my house. I was so busy drowning in escrow papers. Mm. Um. I got this audition for a show called Siren that I had not seen. I had about an hour to watch whatever shows, I, you know, episodes I could. Yeah. And then I had to do the work for the next day for the audition. Oh, for yeah. the so audition. I okay. go into the audition. I zip it out right and i'm like thank you so much Bye. back to work yeah literally legging it back house. to my house trying to go through 157 pages of all of this really big life admin stuff yeah of buying a house which i'd never done before i was terrified i had no idea what i was doing and my agent and manager rang me and like hey so they liked you but um could you change your hair and come back wearing something different Wow. I was like, oh my God. Has that happened before? Come back to look different? Yeah, a couple okay. of times, but I was like, oh my God, I do not have time for this. Wow. I am so busy right now. I mean, really up to my eyeballs. And I was like, of course, sure, no problem. So I, God bless my manager and agent, I sent them pictures ahead of time with the next outfit and hair yeah. and casting. God bless them. They're amazing. Uh, shout out to Tennis and... Liz Barnes, thank you very much. And <laughs> they're awesome. And everyone was like, yep, you're good to go. Come in for the audition. So I had a new scene for that audition, but I did the other scenes. So I go back in. I said, thank you so much. There's only other one person in the waiting room, but I genuinely think it's not a callback. I genuinely think they're just retaping me with the new hair and the new outfit to send to the producers. Right. So gotcha. I'm thinking my first audition doesn't count. And this is my first audition. Gotcha. But there was only other one person in the in the waiting area. And I was like, hmm, I, I, I'm, they're probably just fitting me in last minute because they're so lovely. Thank you so much. I leave. I go home. That was on a Thursday. Friday, I get a call saying, okay, you're in the running. I was like, what? Okay. And 
we're, we're, things are moving quickly. I said, okay, they need you to take a swimming test. I said, okay. what? Wow. That, so they're going to set you up for a swimming test on Sunday night in, <laughs> on, in, there's an aquatic center in Pasadena, okay. which I never knew about. Wow. And this is in July, so it's summertime. And so you have to sign your test deal before you swim. So a test deal is when all the criteria, all the payment, all the little and big details of booking the job, okay. I have to agree to it and everyone else has to agree to it. And you have to sign for it before you get booked oh my so God. that no one can then go back and say, well, I want this now and I want this uh, differently, right? Okay. You have to get a lawyer for that real quick? Uh, yes, but it, it just depends on okay. the on the deal itself. Damn. So you review all the information. I'm like, yep, sounds great. And I honestly was like, yep, good, sign, off you go. <laughs> I then am still really honest to God, like under the wire for escrow stuff and yeah. house stuff. Real and life shit, yeah. Like actually adulting for once yeah. in my life. Congrats, and by the way. Bloody hell, yeah. yes, thank you. Yeah. I need a medal because it was a lot. <laughs> And so I go to the swim test on a sun on a Sunday night. And Are you a good swimmer? Yes, I okay, am. Okay. But I haven't swum properly in ages. And by the way, I wasn't like a, col a collegiate swimmer in university. Yeah. I just loved swimming. Yeah. I was in the ocean a lot. That's it. So I get to my lane in this aquatic center. And someone from the network is there who has to oversee it just to make sure wow. I, I can actually swim. Doing the can, dog paddle and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it would be like, um, I don't think crazy. she's ready. Yeah. Right. So I'm a terrible swimmer. Go ahead. There. So they hire <laughs> they hire one of the you know the people at the aquatic center to give me like a lesson. Wow. And I swear to God, this kid was probably 20 years old, 19 years old, and he was like, okay. Tiffany, are you ready? And I was like, oh my God, what is happening? And he was like, can you swim two lengths with front crawl? Go. And I was like, oh my God, this is hilarious. So I do front and back, you All know, right. there and back. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm out of breath. I cannot look <laughs> like I'm out of breath. Do not let the studio person see you out of breath. Right. And then he says, right, okay, do breaststroke. And I'm like, oh, shit, I haven't done this in years. So I'm like, here I go, here I go, here I go. Okay, he's like, just kick out a little more, kick out a little more. And then I turn around when I get to the end of that second lap, and I realize, apart from all the instructors in the pool, I'm the only adult because it is after-school program summer for kids wow and all of them are being taught like i'm being taught and i was like <laughs> if someone like i'm standing you know in the shallow end and i'm like two feet over all the other kids in the pool and wow. i'm thinking this is hilarious <laughs> and i've got my old beat up speedo on you know and i'm like okay i'm gonna do this and he was like let's do butterfly and i was like what 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 no no okay i'm going right i do two lengths of butterfly and I get out and I am so out of breath, I have to sort of duck down so that the network person can't see me because I'm Whoa. like, oh my God, oh my God, please don't look, please don't look. And he was like, you did such a great job. He was like, you're good. And I was like, thank you so much. So he obviously hasn't been told what it's for. Right. He just yeah. want, you know, he's just been told like, can you just see that this person can swim? Right. So. I said, thank you very much to the network executive. And I, I presume other people have also had swim tests that day, yeah. but I haven't seen anyone. They don't ever want you to cross over. And I said, thank you so much. I go to my best mate's house who lives nearby. She cracks open some rosé bubbly <laughs> because we celebrate the small wins. And the yeah. small win was I got this far. I signed a test deal. I had a swim test, which I've never done before. We had some vegan food. I think we ordered somewhere nearby. Awesome. And it was so lovely. And that was it. I mm -hmm. genuinely thought I have made it this far and I couldn't be happier. That's it was a Sunday night, right? That was a Sunday night. So I wake up on Monday. I'm running errands. I'm, you know, just Adulting. living life. Thank you. <laughs> and my agent calls me and he's like, you booked it and you have to leave on Friday for five and a half months. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I said, okay, I can't leave on Friday because I've got animals oh. and I have to figure it out. At your house. At yeah. my house. And I was like, so tell them I will be on the first flight on that Monday because 
we have a table read, yeah. we have fittings, all sorts of stuff. Wow, all sorts man. Of stuff. So talk about being busy. I don't even remember that week. I was running around Blacked out, yeah. crazy. But you know when you have to get things done, you, you have, get it done. You, you get it done. And if you don't get it done, you didn't need to get it done. Mm. So wow. I was on a plane at 6.30 in the morning from LAX to Vancouver that following Monday. So pumped. First time going to Vancouver. First, First time going time. to Vancouver. Wow. Booked a series regular. I'm... <sighs> And what I didn't quite realize was like I was the the new I was like the new villain on the show. Yeah, yeah. And so I land, they pick me up from the airport, boom, I'm straight into getting my contacts fitted because we wear color contacts as mer as the different sirens. Yeah. We have yeah. the different tribes. So I'm from the purple eye tribe. And <laughs> teeth. Because we have, as the sirens in the water, we're like predators, we're like okay. sharks. So we have really funky predatory teeth but each of us has our own set of teeth that are purpose built for us so i'm in the chair getting Did you my know prosthetics all this before you got there no 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 okay. i had no idea wow. and i was like right this is a lesson in just going with the flow I've, I've, I have the privilege of being flown to Vancouver, booked this job. People are doing this for me, particularly with these eye contacts and all this Incredible, kind of stuff. Man. And then we have the table read. Okay. And then I get shoved in the pool for some training. Wait, so the <laughs> more table read more was, swimming. Oh swimming. my God. So the table read was the first time of... Meeting everyone. Wow. Meeting That's everyone intense. and knowing what was... Meeting anyone. I That's had just intense. met the casting directors Jeez. who I've known for years because I've been in and out of the office. Yeah. I... Be, they were already up in Vancouver. Dude. So my tape was sent up to them. I see. And I then got straight into the pool training with the free diver wow. expert. Way more intense from the teenage kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A little more. Really. And Roberta, she's like our tank mom. She's unbelievable. Like one of the top free divers. So, and she works on all the TV shows and films who do waterworks and she's safety diver and amazing does competitions. Yeah. And then Jeff Hardy, our, our scuba diver master, wow, right? Man. These experts are no joke some of the best in the world and this is what they do day in and day out they're coast guards they train yeah. they're safety divers they're always in the water they're water people yeah this is what they do and it was so fun but i was really intimidated all of a sudden i love being in the water but i didn't know what the heck was happening it seems like intense it's like it is and i just said to myself i'll be okay i'm in the hands of professionals yeah nothing bad's gonna happen just go with it and I had one week of dive training. I mean, I'd scuba, I, I, I'd been scuba diving 20 years ago. And I don't even remember. I was a kid. Like, yeah. I, I don't even remember. Once, twice, maybe most. And so all of a sudden, I'm free diving. So you, that means you take a breath at the top, uh, out, out of the water. And then you dive all the way down. And you hold the breath the whole time. You do not let any air go until you come back up. And then you let the air out out of the water. Wow, man. Whereas scuba diving, you're breathing on the regulator yeah, all right. the way down. Okay. And these are two very different systems when you're in the water and sometimes you're using both as you're filming. So That's crazy, man. fast forward a week later, we've had the table read. I've done my week of training. I'm getting assimilated into Vancouver. I'm staying at the Sutton Hotel, if anyone shout out to the Sutton. And <laughs> it's like Hollywood up there. You're bumping into actors all the time. Okay. I think there's something like 46 productions filming up there wow. at a the time. Probably That's more now. Lot. It's a lot. So you're seeing the, oh the crew God. calls everywhere. And it's great fun. Yeah. And I'm now meeting all the cast and crew. They're incredible. They're so welcoming. And I am now on set. And I have the first line of the first scene of the first day. And I just said, right, let's, let's do it. Yeah. There's, you know, because it doesn't matter. You just, you say it. And if you mess up, it doesn't matter. How'd you do? I think pretty well, but I was <laughs> shaking in the best way. It's the best adrenaline. Yeah, like it's, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I care so much. Yeah. And these, these professionals have proven themselves and they all know each other. And yeah. so here I am, but it's actually works to your advantage, especially in that, in that, as that character, because everyone's kind of looking at you yeah. and waiting. She and she's seeing. the new girl. She's the new girl. Yeah. So I loved it. And we were off to the races. And so what happens with Siren is you shoot, I think it takes nine days to shoot an episode. So you shoot eight days on land. Okay. And then our final day for every episode is in the water, in the tank. 
And it's a purpose-built tank, which is 30 feet wide by 16 feet deep. And they kept it at a very balmy 91 degrees Fahrenheit for the entire time. And we wear these very thin suits that are flesh colored to our flesh tone with X's down them. And we get painted by the wonderful makeup department uh, X's and dots for the CGI that comes later. Mm. So we're in a flesh colored suit with a skirt to zip up your legs. So they, they hold together and then you're wearing a monofin. And the first time I walked into the set the, the sound stage and I looked up at this huge dark tank and it was like oh. balmy and it echoes in there and I you have to walk up scaffolding to get wow, up man. the 16 so feet intimidating. and there's this platform where makeup and CGI you know uh, visual effects yeah. the director the producing director all the safety people are and I'm looking at this vast oh tank God. of water and I thought Oh my God, what is happening here? (laughs) And everyone has that experience. That's the good news. And immediately you get in and it's so warm and you're like, oh, this is delightful. It's like bath water. Yeah. (laughs) And then what happened is I decided to initiate every tank day for myself with an underwater lap around the tank. Nice. So while all the team, because all these safety divers are also crew you have a land crew yeah and you have a water crew so okay. they're doing lighting grips camera yeah all underwater with scuba gear on oh God, so i insane, would take man. a lap around the tank and i'd be waving to everyone as they're moving lights as they're moving yeah. spots for our blocking everything and you spend sometimes eight hours in the tank with the wow. with these folks so you, you're having a laugh you're you know, you're eating a sort of a bite of a banana or a sandwich as you're hanging out in the tank just to get some fuel yeah. because it takes a lot out of you. Is there a difference between a regular cameraman or an underwater cameraman? Yes. Like you have to be trained to be filming and be underwater, right? Compared to the guy that's filming a regular movie, right? Okay. Yes. So yeah. we had a completely separate team. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. How do you swim with the wow. fin? The Unifin. So you, you have, have to, to you have to learn, and it really helps to have that skirt zipped up your legs because you have no choice but to use your entire right. body like a like a dolphin, yeah. like a siren, mermaid, like a mermaid. <laughs> and wow, we are wearing our teeth in the water, and we are wearing our contact lenses in the water. And we had two different types. So we had land contact lenses, which are normal sized, and then we had slightly bigger ones for the water because when you're swimming with your eyes open you don't want them to pop out which they do anyway because of the force of it but generally the bigger ones will stick to your eyeballs Mm -hmm. and that took some getting used to i don't wear contact lenses in life yeah all of us are wearing glasses right now which is cracking me up we all look (laughs) fabulous by the way and so i was really worried about these contact lenses because my eyes i was blinking all the time they were dry it was really hurt it was really hurting my eyes within three days you get used to it it's incredible then you sort of crave them you're like give those suckers to me you know and we had a whole team who only are there for your contacts they put them in and they take them out yeah wow do you get to keep the teeth no, I, I kept, no, I probably could have. I didn't even think oh, about okay. it. I, mean, I, I kept my little nosy, which is a sinus saver, which goes into your nostrils to help uh, from water preventing going straight up your nose and into your sinus. Because oh. then you can't breathe and it's a nightmare and right. you start like coughing and it's not good. Do you have stuff on your hands too? Because your hands probably get all raisiny and like being in the water all day. Like the, you, no, are, you, you, are yeah, you are pruned up. You're pruned up, right? Yeah, yeah, that's and what I'm thinking. You're, you blow it up because you're taking in, you're absorbing, wow, your skin is right. absorbing so much water. And you would wear a weight belt, which divers use, depending on your buoyancy as a human. I'm very buoyant, apparently, mm-hmm. <laughs> because what would happen is you would I would dive down and then I would center myself, but I would start floating right. qu- quite quickly back up to the surface. So I had a ton of weight on my belt. Sometimes I had 12 pounds on my belt oh to my help God. me wow. hold me down, which I love. The heavier, the better, because then I felt like I could move more rather than fighting to keep yourself down. Yeah, you're just true. there. It that's hurts. that's intense man that's yeah. life it was a once in a lifetime opportunity yeah. yeah i i took in every second of it and our lead siren who plays rin the lead siren aline powell was 
someone who was so gracious with her time and energy and someone who I learned from. She set the tone for how we mo moved as sirens, how we lent, because we, we had our own sign language underwater, which isn't actual sign language. It's our own, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, siren sign language. And so I felt so lucky because I had all these amazing people who had done this for two and a half years yeah. who I could look to and ask questions and everyone was so generous that it made my experience not only fun but I could completely relax into Tia because I wasn't in my head as Tiffany oh my gosh am I doing mm. this right or like no they were there to yeah. help you mm -hmm. that's amazing I need, I need to really dive into that too. I, I'm going to try to dive into that this week with my family. Dive into dive. it? Whoa. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> oh, before we get the snowfall, also you you did producing too. Like you produced eight episodes of uh, This Is A Love Story. Yes. You produced that. So that was... Um, I know it's shot. going back a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, it's going back. So I shot that in Dallas before okay. I moved out to LA. Oh, wow. Okay, wow. Okay. And it took a bit of time to, you know, get Come it all together, okay. which happens. But I tell you, it was a great experience as an actor, as an EP, as all of it because it was like film school in 14 days you know it okay. is full on we were micro budget we fundraised it was incredible people really showed up and it was such a great learning experience that i i've really taken it with me you know through to today yeah you love producing too you love that i do i i shy away from it sometimes because i sort of feel now i'm stepping into more of my introverted writer side oh, okay that's not to say i've written anything necessarily that i'm going to show yet it's yeah. still something i am a little bit shy about okay and even my body language now i'm like oh, i don't know if i can talk about this but yes <laughs> i love writing yeah yeah you've always been into writing too i i i have but i never really talked about it okay i always felt like writers were just writers and they knew what they were writing and how could i possibly be like that because i don't know what the hell i'm writing mm. and now i've slowly learned that it doesn't matter it's just it's got to be what i want to write about do you journal a lot i do every day three yeah, our pages friend does that too I and mean, it's very therapeutic for people just to write everything every day and it's just... extraordinary mm. and i i notice my mood shifts when i don't journal I'm like, mm, if I get to the end of the day and I haven't journaled, I'm like, what is wrong? Why do I feel so blah? And it's because I haven't just allowed all those crazy thoughts in my head just to just out. out. Mm. Then I don't have to take them with me during the day. Yeah. Yeah. I think I do need to. I mean, a friend does that all the time. It really yeah. helps them. Goes to coffee shop in the morning, drinks coffee, journals every single day. It's like. It's very cathartic. Yeah. And I think it's also very grounding. And I heard recently someone say in a podcast somewhere don't think about things as a routine. Think about them as a ritual. And I really I like, like that. that. I like that too. That's really nice. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to get the snowfall now, man. Oh, boy. <sighs> I don't know if I should go pee first because I got to go pee. But I really, I, this is like oh one of our favorite God. shows. Maybe me, you should go pee first. Me and Derek Jeez. love this show so much. <laughs> and then we found out you were on it. We're like, oh, my God, this is insane because <laughs> we've been watching it from the jump. You turned me on to yeah, snowfall. I was like, uh, I'm always perusing the the channels, right especially back. during. I'll like, right back. Go, keep going. I'll explain how we got. And, and you realize that the main <laughs> dude's English as well. And like, yes. right, uh, correct, correct. Right, so, oh, yeah, during the whole lockdown, it was just like, mm -hmm. what are we gonna watch? Like, I was like, I have never been home so much mm -hmm. that I can sit and go through and try to find, you know, quality thing, you know, quality programs or shows to watch. And I really love movies and I really love TV and I love the aspect of the writing of the characters and everything like that. So Snowfall, I would always just keep seeing the billboards around L.A. Yeah. And I was just very curious. I was like, oh, these are so unique, like the coloring behind it and everything. And it just really drew me in. And then uh, I started watching and I was like, John Singleton. I was mm -hmm. like, I was like, really? I was like, OK, this is something i definitely want to check out and i start watching immediately i was like what this is, i never saw i never heard about this from anyone telling me about the show mm -hmm. and immediately after i watched the first episode i was like oh i was like toby yo <laughs> yo in you gotta watch this this is an incredible show i'm gonna continue watching now like the the characters are are, are so you unique and i remember a lot of things from the past yeah from that show and i was just very drawn to it immediately and the and, and all the actors are phenomenal 
They're phenomenal. Soundtrack, everything is just really done very well. And I got Toby into it. I was like, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. It's incredible. Especially living in L.A. Especially living in L.A. Ooh, and that history. was the thing. Like, it was during the lockdown, I had a big chance to walk around L.A. and get more into the, it's true. the city, the vibe itself. And I was like, oh, this show is perfect for that. Incredible acting, incredible cast, everything, all of them. You fall in love with every character. Agreed. You know their names. Like you, 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 yeah, it's like. And I, and I love the fact that they were dealing with uh, historical things that were happening. Yes. At yeah. the time period and then mixing it with, you know. A bit um, of drama. A bit of drama there. Yeah. <laughs> but then. But then. I, but then you're like, oh, yeah. New character alert. Yeah. You're like, I got some. I got Carissa. some. So you, Marissa, because we were friends, yeah, and we chat about film and TV. Yeah, yeah, right. You're a really good resource for that because I, I feel like you really do watch a lot of stuff. Right. He does. He's always sending us stuff to watch know, to my family. I know it's really great because. You know, as someone in the industry, that's part of my job is to watch it. But good yeah. Lord, I mean, there yeah, aren't enough hours in the day right. right now. I mean, wow. And so it's really good to get a rec from a friend yeah. and take the time. So he told you about the show? No, no. we had been okay. we had just been chatting about, okay. you know, film and TV just in general. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, over lunches and all this kind of like a little pine. Hey, little pine. And, <laughs> and you know, just beyond that. Yeah. And then... I think we had a lunch or something. Right. He was like, what are you doing now? And I was like, well, I just booked Snowfall and literally his face, jaw open, <laughs> deep breath. And he was like, no way. That <laughs> is my favorite show. And I was like, woo. So I cool, was man. So, so stoked, stoked for you. you. Yeah, like, me too. Thank you, guys. And to yeah. see it too. Like, yeah. Fuck, yeah. man. Your so character. How many badass. seasons tell the people like it's So it so we have now finished season five. Yeah. Right. You do so like six episodes, right? Yeah. Okay. So I joined halfway through season five. Yeah. And again, it like comes down to, oh my gosh, I'm joining an existing cast and right. crew Dude. who are phenomenal. Phenomenal. phenomenal and I don't say that just because I'm on the show because I think it's important as an actor that I choose shows that that I actually like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I had seen the show, not by, n by no means I had not seen all of the show, but what I had seen, I was blown away. Yeah. And I, again, this audition happened very quickly where I was taping. I was on my way to Atlanta. I filmed the moment I got off of the plane at like 6.30 p.m., sent it off to my agents, didn't think about anything, got back to LA and boom, they were like, okay, you've got it table reads on zoom on friday Dude. you're working next week and i was like bloody hell you know it, it happens <laughs> like that yeah. and so all of a sudden it was very real right and those nerves kick in i'm sure yeah like this is an amazing cast and crew yeah. and yeah. they know what they're doing yeah i don't want to mess it up yeah do you have to watch the all this everything leading up to that not all of it okay. i mean right. you can really get the gist obviously yeah. i wanted right. to make sure i knew the most about the Teddy character, Teddy, who's a yes, CIA character. Dude, I hate him. I know. I think a lot of people do as, I hate his as face. a character. I, I know he's a great actor. <laughs> he dude. is. That's why we hate him. He but is. Dude. Okay, and shout out to Carter Hudson, who plays Teddy, because he's awesome. Yes. And Amazing actor. Yeah. To all of, you know, everyone. I don't hate you, man. <laughs> <laughs> just your character is so slimy. And just I know. Uh. So I wanted to make sure, because... Teddy and my character, Parissa, had a history from before this time. Right. So yeah. I needed to make sure I knew at least enough about him as a person that I could connect with him once I came back on the scene. Yeah. And obviously the story, it's good to know what the story is and just have an appreciation for the tone and what's happening yeah. and, you know, be respectful of like all the work that's been gone yeah. into it before, you know, 45 episodes up until that point. And so luckily it shoots in LA, which yeah. Yeah. is amazing and isn't happening so much these days. Hope it comes back. So, you know, I drop off my dog Hugo at doggy daycare in the morning, drive out to East LA, East LA yeah. and film so for legit. the day and, you know, be back home for dinner. It was that's great. Incredible. Wow. Oh, man. And that doesn't always happen. So we were definitely, you know, we were on location in East LA where those neighborhoods still look like they're from the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, when you're shooting a decade, the house is not built in that decade. It's yeah. usually two decades right. before that. So these houses were built in the 50s and 60s. 
and they look like they're from the 70s, yeah. 80s. Yeah, it's so authentic, the oh, whole yeah, show. It's, just everything. it's amazing. Yeah. So we are, you know, my little house in East LA, chain link fence around it. There's a dog out back on the neighbor's side who comes up and says hi to all of us. You know, we're inside. Like, there's not you know, we take out some of the furniture, right? Production, they do all that. They're amazing. And they make it so it's my house. And it really works because I walk into that space. I'm like, this is my house. Right. It's crazy, man. And it's awesome. And yeah. it, my introduction is so great because you don't know who I am, where right. I've oh. come from. Teddy's just been shot, spoiler alert, yeah. and <laughs> bleeding out, yes. has nowhere to go because he's burned every other bridge. Yeah. And here he is. And I was a former physician as a character. Yes. I like to think I am in real life as well, but I'm not. Uh, it's definitely believable. <laughs> yes. It's so believable, man. <laughs> and boom, then, you know, then we're off. It is insane. Like, uh, I, yeah, I don't want no spoiler alerts, but you, it, people have to watch it. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're incredible. You're a character. Thank you. You're, you're like, your chemistry with him, mm-hmm. whether yeah. it's there or not, it just, I don't know. It's amazing, man. It's intense. Yeah. And, you know, I had only met Carter over zoom once wow because we're still very much in covid protocol for production yeah, right so we were not having in-person table reads which is where i would have naturally yeah. met him or had a coffee with you know him and the showrunner to go over things so we had a zoom chat with dave and john who's one of the co-creators and showrunner with john singleton and yeah. uh, and then i had a separate one with just with carter so we could really tap into this relationship which yeah we needed to have because we've known each other for so long as characters. Is it safe to say that that's, I could be wrong, but it just mm. seems like that's the first time I've seen him romantic with a woman on the show. He uh, had a no, wife had earlier a wife. on. I, I yeah. remember, yeah. Who was in the, in, in, in the agent as well. Okay, yes. you're right, you're right. That's you're right. right. But she, yeah. But then I think she left or yeah, something yeah. happened. I can't like my brain with all these episodes. And he had had, I think, like a, a friend or a brother or something, okay. right? Okay. So there were there were some relationships over the time, but he is a very isolated character he because is. he's, you know, he's really messing up with everyone. Yeah. He is. And he's just like so like stale and just so yeah. like, tense it's like just seeing what they have an interaction yeah it's so this was an opportunity so to allow some vulnerability for you know for him yeah some intimacy because when you yes. are you know when you are screwing everyone over there's not a lot of trust there no yeah. and i am unique as a character because i don't have any other contact or connections with the other characters you don't so that really <coughs> helps dude and it was brilliant it was yeah. amazing. So, I'm, so, will we have another season? Is the question. I mean, you probably can't say or can't. Can we do. Okay, we cool. got okay. greenlit for a sixth and final season. I, I, saw the, uh, I saw a billboard right by your. And so you'll be coming back. You, oh, your place. Oh yeah, a yeah, yeah. Like, You'll be coming back. I'll be coming back, but again, I can't. I can't tell you how, when, why, yeah. how long. They yeah. are writing it now. Okay. Okay. And I think what's brilliant is. I'm sure as, you know, writers and creators of the show, they're thrilled to know that they have this ending in sight so that they can really try and tie up these many characters so yeah. many characters. and their intense storylines, all of them. I know, man. So there's going to, it's going to be full on season six. The mom's a badass too. His mom. She's yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Michael dude. Hyatt is the actor. She's extraordinary. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. So you've met the whole cast. Obviously. I point. did like, eventually we had, I think one or two in-person table reads where we were testing every 48 hours. Okay which was great because we got a bit of a chance to see each other in person. So That's I met awesome. everyone crossing paths. And then when we're on set or when we're at the trailers and hair and makeup, you're like, Hey, 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 how's it going? It's great. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, you run marathons. Oh, you have, I have, I run four marathons. Four. I want to run, I want to oh run, I want to run one next year as my goal. Like I never awesome. did. Awesome. Yes. I'll help. I'll help I, you. I whatever you need. Because I yeah. do love running. And Excuse I, need, me. I, need, I, need, I need to go to the loo. And yes. I, I, need, I need to be pushed. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've, I've sat here and watched the marathon come by Pico many times. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I know I could do that because I run. A, I mean, I have yeah. good stamina with running, but yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk to you about that more. About Absolutely. That's like, that's like on my bucket list. It's extraordinary. Like you, you will not regret doing it. Do you run a lot still? I don't so much because I actually had a hip surgery. So okay. I tore the cartilage in my groin. Uh, wow. It's called a labral tear. How? And I think it's just wear and tear over many years of high impact sports like uh, snowboarding and skiing and okay. all that. And also it's how my body is shaped. I have what are called impingements, infringements, sorry. And shit, I can't even remember now. Anyway, it's my hip bones are shaped like eggs, not baseball shape. Uh, so they don't move in the hip socket the same way. Got you. 
So anyway, there we go. So you had surgery not too long ago? Yeah. And it's, it, I'm okay to run a little here and there, but not like I used to. Also, I have scar tissue. I mean, it's the, you Would you, you know, do the marathon? What's that? It's a lot. Would you do I, the, the I would. I'd have to really, really support myself with like cross training and stretching. Okay. And one thing I'm not brilliant at is stretching yeah, I mean, afterwards. I know. I, I get really more. lazy. I know. We all need to be doing Especially like hot yoga. And, yeah. Yes. I need to stretch. <laughs> I mean, that's like a big thing. Do you have any daily rituals? Yeah. So journaling. Yes. We know that. And taking my pup for walks. That's you a copy person. I am. So I have an oat milk latte in the morning. Bam, bam. Love it. One earlier, yeah, yeah. yeah. So good. I, di- I, I didn't drink coffee up until like three years ago. Me either. Oh my gosh. Really? Me either. My whole life. What happened? I started drinking coffee in like 2019. Maybe the listeners probably know because they're sick of me talking about it. I did it straight for one month of December. It made me insane because I don't do anything. I don't put nothing in my body. That's the, the major drug I've ever did was coffee. Right. So it made me, we talk about it. I want to talk about it more. Anyway, I quit. I go back on it. Now I'm back on it. I'm trying to wean myself off with this uh, yerba mate tea that oh great that, yes. uh, Derek gives me yeah Almaz. But yeah, but I don't know. I did something about it. I love it. Yeah, for me, I mean, it could be anything, right? It could be a cup of tea. It could be a Very juice. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I think again, it's that ritual that I was craving. Yeah, and you know, I take you know my buddy Hugo for a walk, and we'll pick up a coffee. He gets a treat. It, it's just, it's really lovely. And so that's a Cali day. uh, It is (laughs) an oat milk latte. And walk my dog. You hike hike too? I hike. I I hike too. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love a hike. Uh, Yeah. And it's so Cali, man. It's unreal. It's great. We're so lucky. But look, at least we're enjoying it. I know. I know. Yeah. Hikes, your dog, coffee, um, no yoga. Sometimes hot yoga. When I'm really in the the flow of life and I've got a little bit more of a routine in terms of exercising, yeah. I go to F45, okay. if you're familiar, and that's functional 45 training where you do cross training, functional training, Damn. weight resistance. It's awesome. And Sounds then intense. it it is. Yeah. But everyone can do it. That's the thing. Anyone can do it. I was never a weight training or resistance training person. Um, I know you guys do that. And I was cardio my whole life. And I just decided, you know, I need to mix things up. And I've never been a gym person or one of these studio places. Yeah. My friend took me about two, three years ago. I could not move my arms after the first... (laughs) After the first session, and I said to myself, that means all of these mu- muscles have atrophied, and I need they're not being used. I need right. to do this. I need yeah. to do this. And I've never been so strong as F45 in Vancouver, whilst I was also doing dive training, oh, yeah. is yeah. amazing. Yeah. And so I will then also go to hot yoga sometimes. That really helps. Yeah, I did that once, Bikram. It was gnarly. I don't do Bikram. I do I Moto Yoga. Okay. Yeah, but same, right? I mean, it's it's It was hot. just like, it did mm. the floor smell. It does. It was Ew. packed. Oh. It is. Okay. It, it, was, it, it, was, it, it was intense. I never not went Not appealing as one. It, it, was, it, was, it was the original all. spot on the Hacienda. Oh, like, right. It was intense. Have you seen the documentary? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Um, <laughs> um, one of my questions is, are you an optimist or pessimist? But you're a total optimist, I can tell. Thank you so much. I think I, 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 think I switched. I think I was a pessimist Ooh, when I was younger. Okay. Mm. I think that was a protective mechanism, okay. right? If, it, if I'm going to be pessimistic, then, you know, it's like, fine. I'm going to just expect yeah. mm-hmm. the bad shit to happen. I like how he thanked me for calling you an optimist. Like, thanks. I, I love it. <laughs> I, I'm so I glad. That. I'm so glad. No, you have a good positive energy well you know? look i think like attracts like and just getting to know you guys and our other mutual friends you know there's a lot of good there and people who live an authentic life and who are putting good things out in the world and it's been so joyful you know even after a decade in la i'm meeting really awesome people mm-hmm. thank you yeah oh, i think she's talking about us definitely thank you thank definitely you no, but you have a good energy like you like you've that. always like believed in yourself throughout all this stuff and pushed yourself I think that comes with, you know, my dad's a serial entrepreneur. My mom is a voracious reader. They're very curious about life. Yeah. And then being sent to boarding school, you know, pros and cons. But one of the pros is I'm very independent Mm -hmm. and you just kind of get it done. You're like, okay, I don't have time to wait for anyone else to do this. Let me just do it. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Which leads to a lot of great things. Yeah. You have yourself to count on the whole time. Yeah. I mean, not to like in this world, I mean, a lot of things. If you just get it done yourself, it gets done faster and the way you want it to be. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Right. And I love that. I think that's 
the best way to live be your own boss, you know, your own rules. And I also had to learn how to ask for help though when I needed it. Yeah. I didn't quite have that. That's a tough one. Yeah, so that's a been one. a great lesson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that like a pride thing or is that like I don't need any help. I'm, I'm, it I'm might good also, on my own or I don't know. I think maybe that and a combination of maybe feeling like people let you down. So mm, why bother? Right. right. That's facts. That's really true. So you have to learn to ask the right people. Yeah. And if, if they're not proving to you through their action that they're able to help you, no problem. Just yeah. go on to the next person. Just go on to the right person. Keep going. That's yeah. what I didn't do. I stopped asking for help. Uh-huh. And that really tripped me up because then I was putting everything on myself and that's when it got really tough. Like in my 20s, I think that's when I was saying when I was really lost because I didn't know who to turn to for help. Right. Yeah. And now I've broken through that and that feels really great. Don't be afraid to ask for advice or help or anything. Yeah. 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 Do you have any major regrets? Gosh, you know, not joining the army, I would say it was a big one. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I never would have guessed that. Well, because it was four years of quite a set infrastructure like i'm very good with something being in place and i can work within those boundaries and there's a time frame and you like the structure and i love a structure yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah. i find it a little bit challenging when there isn't one i'm 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 trying to get better at that i'm trying to be more spontaneous i really am it's all of your house and shit love a (laughs) post-it i knew it (laughs) love a list right i got a list on my phone for sure love it i have goals written in my in my wall in there yeah. awesome yeah i have my 2022 goals i have yeah, like life <laughs> goals you know you gotta you gotta put it down at, on, on paper works, man. I don't know. it also helps keep us focused like if yeah. you're seeing the list like oh yeah that's what i'm working towards exactly or if you're like oh i don't care about this anymore just cross it off the list no big yeah. deal so i really feel i would have done well in that role for four years because mm-hmm. I didn't mention this earlier, but what I love doing with, we just call it OTC in England, but ROTC. And what I had the great privilege uh, of doing was being part of the ski and shoot biathlon team. Ski and shoot. Okay. So if you're familiar with for the, the listeners, what's that mean? For the listeners. So if anyone's familiar watching the winter Olympics where you've got cross country skiers and they've got rifles, rifles over the shoulders, yeah. that's what I did. Wow. That's badass. That is badass. And it was awesome. I was part of like a winning team with ROTC and that was what I would have really loved to carry on doing with the army. And I just didn't articulate that enough in time to get my head around it and say, like, this is what I'm going to work towards. Mm -hmm. I was very distracted by the glitz and glam of MTV, of media, of all. I loved it all. It's all Blink-22's fault. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You just got caught up in that. I did. It's fantastic. And I was traveling the world. I mean, I was living, I was winning at life. Yeah. And it's really hard to want to step away from that. And I love the people I work with. I'm still friends with a bunch of them. They were mm. all amazing people. So you're just sort of up leveling together. And I was like, well, this is this is going to last forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it did not. <laughs> yeah. But still, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel experience. like. Experience. Wow. And yeah. I, I don't know if I, I want to be careful here because I, I don't know if I regret it. Maybe I see it more as that was a good lesson for me. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to learn that lesson again. Yeah. So it's it's a good reminder that if there's something I really want to do, to just go for it. And it doesn't mean I have to give everything else up around me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think I was always a bit more black and white, a bit more binary uh, right, like that. Right. Like, it's just this now. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. But you worked hard for everything. I, I mean... And I've been very privileged. Like I, I, you know, my socioeconomic status is, has always been very even keel. I've always had a roof over my head. I've always had food on the table, clothes on my back and, you know, ups and downs with that. But I've, I've never gone a day without a meal. And so I am in the top 1% in the world. And I, I want to, you know, be very clear that I've had those privileges and, you know, I have a really good education. And so that helps in terms of people I know um, who have done really well in their lives. I can look to them as expander people. You know, I've been just very fortunate. But it wasn't handed to you either. You no, worked you worked for all your shit. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. You in, know what I mean? Like, like, no, yeah, don't worry about that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah the, the, I mean, it's not like I had a connection in the acting industry, which maybe exactly. got right, me right. in. Exactly. And so, you know, I do know people and I, I have, you know, family friends or someone who, who, who were, who have been in the industry and weren't necessarily a help. You know, I might have met with them once over the years and they were help in terms of, 
I realized that I couldn't ask them right. for help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is helpful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I learned, I always learned something. Always. Yeah. Even if someone was like, you're on your own, go do it. It's like, oh, okay, I can do this. I can right. really do this. I mean, yeah, because you've been on your own most of your life. I mean, it seems yeah. like when you moved out early, it's like, yeah. <clears throat> you had to figure it out. Yeah. You, you, you were right into reality, right into the world, you know? I think also that, you know, that that's just something inherent in me. And I, I believe in nature and nurture. Yeah. And there's definitely something that I have always felt very comfortable on my own. I think as an only child, yeah. I, you know, I'd be just daydreaming in my bedroom and making <laughs> up stories and listening to tapes and all sorts of stuff. And I've always felt very comfortable in, in that arena. Yeah. And so I feel very fortunate that I have, you know, friends who are like family to me. I love my family. I feel like I have so much to be grateful for. If something doesn't work out, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. You yeah. just keep going. Yeah. It's ex I'm excited to see what happens next with you and your career and stuff. Thank you. Exciting. Thank you. Are you still doing lots of auditions now? Yeah, a few. Um, it, sometimes it slows down around this time of year and then it picks up again. I don't know when we're airing this, but yeah. let's say it starts picking up around July, August again. Okay. Again, who knows? Like we're in such a topsy-turvy world right now in yeah. terms of, you know, we're 2022. We're sort of coming out of COVID, but we're not. We're seeing each other, but we're not. COVID <laughs> protocols are happening. It's like you just got to you just gotta go. I, I don't know. It's so true. But I'm hoping to get back to England and see my granny. She's 93. Oh, my God. Yeah, see wow. my godchildren over there. Like all my mates from uni and school who I've not seen for two and a half years. Yeah. And I'm really excited. I would like to get out there for a couple of weeks, check in with everyone and then come back and sort of refreshed. Yeah. Because when you come off of a production like Snowfall, it's so brilliant, but then you sort of get post-production blues because you're yeah, used so to working. It's like right. post-tour depression. That's it. Yeah. Oh Same my thing. gosh. Same thing. Because you are in it and you are... It's every you, day. It's that's like, it. And you are so excited and, and you're sort of done. at the highest level and then bam it's quiet yeah. and you're like wait where is everyone why isn't anyone offering me an oat milk latte why what's <laughs> happening <laughs> yeah right and then i had the high of watching the show right. air Incredible, man. and then you have the end of that yeah. and yeah. you're like um what do i do now so it's really it's important as we were saying just to live your life beyond that and shake it yes. off yeah. so me going out of town especially back to england seeing everyone i have one friend who's an actor out there but all my friends are in like very proper adult jobs I love that. and they don't care what i do <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> at all yeah they're like okay we're really proud of you like i love you, that you know so they keep me very grounded yeah and it's really good to see them. And, you know, they're very much, they're, all of them are so family oriented. And I know all their parents because we've known each other for so many years. Awesome. So I get a big dose of love and, you know, life is worth living. It doesn't matter about my particular sadness around a particular role. Yeah. Yeah. Can you ever just, can you say like, I'm an actor now and this is what I do? You can say that, but also you still have the um, stress and the not knowing of what's next. Absolutely. It's kind of exciting. It's also scary, right? It is. And you know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah. what's the next thing? It's not guaranteed the next role. It's mm -hmm. not. And I think very few people in, the, in this industry have that stability. Yeah. Maybe Tom Cruise, Angelina Jolie. We can name, you know, really right. top, top, top. And even they don't necessarily, well, I can't speak for them, but there are a lot <laughs> of people in this industry who are extraordinary a-list actors who may not always get the role that they want totally because mm -hmm. that's life yeah. so this path is never certain except for being uncertain yeah and there's a certain calmness in that now okay so it seems stressful to me but for you you're <laughs> in it, it <laughs> sounds it is, like it i know what i mean let's check back again in a year and yeah. see what's happened yeah. but no, i'd love to let's, actually let's yeah do. yeah let's do a follow-up i'm right. excited to see like your, your next roles all that stuff it's yeah. really cool hearing the journey and thank you your perspective on this journey and come where you come from a different country and everything you know it's quite splendid conversation in texas it's all, all that it's just like woohoo yeah but all but all that like if you if you, if you had, like you regret about not doing the military if you had mm. done that you might not be here right now it's like i know a whole different thing right. and that's it and that's why it's like no regrets because every single thing that's happened to me or every decision i've made has led me to this exact moment to be sitting here with you guys yeah. which i On think the number is one so podcast lovely. in my house that's number right, right. In toby's kitchen <laughs> on but my I'm, phone what i'm saying yes. though like yeah your journey is really that. inspiring and you never stopped well, it's like sliding stops. doors. If I had gone right. the army route, as you, uh, you know, 
we would maybe have never have met and I would be living another version of the life. So I just, I think that's why like trusting your gut and going forward with something is really important because I really don't want to get to 97 years old. The women in my family live very long, so it's likely that I will actually make it that long. (laughs) I don't want to get to 97 on my deathbed and think, I really wish I'd just done that and tried yeah. because yeah, they say that more people regret the things that they didn't do rather than the things they did do. Right. And I really take that to heart. I, I, I agree. It, what's the name of this podcast? One Life, One Chance. One Life, That's it. One such a chance. great, that's, that's, that's a great ending for this. You have any questions for her? It's been a splendid conversation. That's two hours, man. I can it's wow. been two wow. hours. Just yes. your voice, your energy. You're, you're such good energy, man. Well, if we I We need can... to hang out more in real life. We, we, yeah, we, we do. We need to go bowling again. Yeah. Like, like, give Derek a second chance at me. I know, right? We went oh, bowling stop. for my birthday, <laughs> and it was so fun. Toby, you're such a good bowler. <laughs> oh, my God. You're Don't really... soup him up. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> but Derek, I hadn't finished yet. Okay. And Derek, Here. you're a really good bowler. Yeah. At times. At times. Right. And Toby was just better than all of us put together. That's all I can say. I just say. want to say and this. Friend. I don't give a fuck about bowling. I never bowl. All right. All right. Like I've been with Derek's friend for like 20 years. I've never seen Derek. <laughs> I, I'm just in saying. competitive mode. Oh, my so gosh. I love, Come on. I know, you know I love you, my I boy. Mean, but the but goal like, is to But Derek's to face. I just want to say your face. When I was just smashing, <laughs> Derek was just disgusted with I me. I was like, not God. disgusted. You I was giving you praise and high fives all that's, the time. I Derek, I was I couldn't believe I had the number one score out of both teams. I know yeah, you I did. think it was a fluke and that's why we oh, have to do it again. God. That's okay. okay. I'm it was down a, for a rematch. A, a beautiful fluke. It was rigged. It was rigged. But I have to say, like of all the people there, this is for my birthday, by the way, if right. anyone didn't catch that. Happy belated girl. Thank you. It was so fun. There was such a camaraderie there, and some people were meeting for the first time and yes. everyone was cheering everyone on. It was brilliant it was wonderful it was really fun and moon was wearing her bowling socks which are the beautiful striped socks and i was like i think we're going to start a a vegan league vegan vegan team and we're all going to wear those socks yeah so we need to go back problem with that i'm down and we have to get vegan bowling shoes yeah we need to get vegan bowling shoes and me and derek fell back because we put on the bowling shoes like why why aren't our friends with the shoes like oh because it's not vegan like fuck i didn't think about the bowling shoes i I know i never used leather in my own life i I know me either i didn't think about it i know but like they make vegan bowling shoes well let's see we should look it up i'm sure we can get a company to make them let's do it absolutely if you're listening now and you make like uh faux leather stylish for god's sakes don't make them like copying off of Typical bowling shoes. They got to stand out. We want the good looking ones. Yeah. yeah. Like neon, like neon orange. That's what I Ooh, want. Okay. Yeah. And my, my trick for the listeners, I get the lightest ball out of all the balls. <laughs> Here, I swear to this God. Guy. I get listen. the light. I use the lightest ball and I just, I, I just, I'm good with it. That's what I do. All yeah. Right. I tried to do that and it didn't work. Okay. It's and then my I, thing then. That's right. it. And, and then I took balls. the heavy ball. <laughs> also didn't work. By the way, can I just say for an hour and a half of our two hours of bowling, I was so shit but I was having such a good time it didn't matter and and it was great and everyone was videoing me like come on Tiff and the videos were so bad and then everyone was so fed up of me doing so poorly that everyone was just chatting and then I got two strikes and no one was looking and no one was videoing it was really funny I had a couple strikes where the person the next lane that wasn't with our crew were like that was good. That was good. good well job. done. I saw all your strikes, dude. I was like, I was like thank we you. We were definitely so the most sweet. rambunctious of the lanes that day. Absolutely. But we were taking over, spilling over. We when Derek over. started not, like when he started doing good again, like his first strike, his whole body was just like glowing. He was so like. I, I just had these injuries I'm getting over and it was just frustrating. It <laughs> was old you know? like me, bro. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm being serious. So, you know, <laughs> like it, it was happening. You know, anyway, we don't have to go into it. But anyway. anyway. Can I just say. Rematch in three months. Rema- we get I'm ready. Yes, yes. When you get back. I'm ready. And may I just say, thank you both so much. Thank you, Toby, for inviting me on. Thank you, Derek. Yes. I appreciate you both. I appreciate your friendship. Appreciate I really you. see both you as sort of up lever up levelers and i really look to you both for that because you live such awesome authentic lives Thank even you. in the muck Aww. like you're still in it and I really, we need that now. We need emotional intelligence. We need connection. So thanks so much for being a part of my life. I really appreciate it. Thank thanks, you. Tiff. She made me emotional so at the ending of the podcast. Thank you. God, Mad love to you. Where can people find your stuff online? Obviously Instagram. Only Instagram at no Tiffany website. Lonsdale. Yeah. No website. Simple. simple, simple, simple. New season of Snowfall. Oh, oh. Yes. All the other shows we talked about. Sirens. I'm going to deep dive that. Yeah, deep dive. Bro. Um, yeah, your journey's exciting. I feel like you're just getting started. I mean, I don't know. It's interesting. Thank you. I, I can't wait to check in next time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. One year later from now. I think I'll have a better English accent by then. Okay, too. good. I'm working on 2023. it. 2023. That's um, goals. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Signing off. Bye.
Yo, people always ask me what kind of frames I'm rocking. I've been rocking Caddis for a couple of years. They make amazing progressive readers, which I wear. Also, they make sunglass readers, anti-glare, anti-smudge coating, anti-scratch, and anti-aging. That's why I look mad young when I wear them. I'm just kidding. Um, but they make amazing frames. Caddis, so stoked to have you guys part of the podcast. You can go to caddislife.com slash Toby10 and get $10 off your first purchase. Stoked. Thank you, Caddis. Welcome to the fam. Yo, yo, Liquid Death. Thank you so much for hydrating all my guests taking care of me and my family and my friends love your water love your brand love what you stand for love you give back to the community if you want to learn more about liquid death and how it started listen to episode 115 with the co-founder owner and creator of liquid death mike cesario just a punk rock skateboarding kid from delaware with a dream it's an incredible story incredible journey they have now blessed me with my own code so if you go liquiddeath.com slash toby You get free shipping on any items you order from liquiddeath.com. Thank you so much, Liquid Death. Death to plastic, murder your thirst. Stay hydrated. You know H2O saves lives.